558, so we'll uh, call the meeting to order if everybody's good with that. Um, we're going to be starting off with uh, a hearing to consider uh, Ms. Kaplan's request to waiver uh, a penalty of $380.50 for, uh, which is a late fee, uh, uh, filing late fee um, of the Vermont Homestead Declaration. Um, and uh, if I can introduce this one, yeah, that, that would be great. Breaking information here. Um, but just to introduce it, so uh, residents have until April 15th to file homestead declaration, and then it's late if you file after April 15th, but before October 15th. That's the cutoff, or it's just no longer possible. And um, our tax administration software assessed the penalty um, this year. It has twice now, as, as um, residents have filed a late homestead declaration, and then we get that information and it says to revise bills and then I printed up revised bills and sent it to the residents. This penalty was on there. Um, so I've done some research on this and um, the, the, whether to assess the penalty is completely at the discretion of the select board as is abatement. And I spoke with um, Sandra Ferber over the weekend. She said that the select board is has not approved a, a penalty for a late homestead declaration as far as she knows, and she would know. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that we have improperly assessed these penalties and we should just, just remove them. And there's no need for abatement because of, they were improperly assessed. And I will, you know, Stephanie will know that. Um, I will let the other taxpayer know. And if it comes up again between now and October 15th, then I would just um, remove that penalty. And, um, I still need to revise the tax bills, but I removed the penalty. <clears throat> so it would be something for us to consider in the future? It's possible. I, I think the logic of it is to motivate people to file on time. Sure. Um, Does it cost us anything if they file late? Huh. No, just, it's just an additional step of having to go in right, on so a regular so. basis, download any homestead declarations, print up a revised bill, get them out. It can cost a lot of staff time. Yes. Yeah, certainly not $350 worth, though. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, so I think that kind of makes a moot point for Stephanie's request. Um, okay. um, but uh, I think one of the other things that were, was raised was uh, when, when this request initially came in, um, Fred and I had kind of a brief conversation on whether or not um, if, if I guess at this point we do decide to uh, create a, a policy, whether or not that that policy would specifically say that um, considerations came to the select board or if they should just go to the uh, board of abatement, which handles other abatement uh, related uh, topics. And I thought there was some merit to that. So I guess to the extent that we feel like um, we want to revisit that, we can, but that would be a future agenda item. Yeah, I mean, in the context of whether to assess the penalty or not, you know, yeah. period, um, which we could, I think we could probably look at when we get to town meeting articles at, because delinquent tax penalties is on the uh, warning every year. So we'll be having that discussion and we can talk about whether to add this. You know, Jan Olson raised this initially. She saw it on the agenda, and she said, "Hey, wait a minute! I don't think we've ever seen this assessment." And her big concern was, "No one knows about the penalty, so right. Right. You, you need to warn people." Right. Yeah. Well, that's fair. Um, yes, Stephanie, do you have any any comments? I guess other than uh, uh, other than we'll be moving on. <laughs> I just want to know if I'm going to get. Uh, a revised tax bill before the 15th. Uh, you'll have it tomorrow. I'll email you tomorrow and I can put it in the mail as well if you want. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for bringing this to our attention. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank it you. wasn't intentional, I can assure you. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it'll never happen again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so well, thank you nonetheless, Stephanie. I appreciate All it. All right. Take care. Bye. See ya. Uh, well, thanks for uh, doing that additional uh, homework, Kari. Appreciate that. And I guess uh, we'll close the hearing. Do we need a motion to close the hearing? I guess it probably wouldn't hurt to entertain a motion to close the hearing. Mm -hmm. Second. Thank you. Any opposed? 
Or, well, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. And uh, with that, uh, we're a little early and we'll just roll right into our regular agenda if that uh, satisfies everyone. Uh, okay, uh, so we'll call the regular meeting to order at, uh, at 6.03 um, and start off with the administrative uh, topics. Uh, first being any additions or changes uh, to the agenda. Does anybody have any new business that they'd like to add to the agenda for consideration? No, I don't. A uh, couple of smaller things. One is um, when we get to the highway department section, it might make sense to start with the speed studies, because that might inform the conversation about uh, speed detection slides. Okay. And then the other one is that when we get to the budget, um, I'm the only, well, other than Bill, I'm the only highway department staffer here. Um, no one else came tonight, so just so you're aware of that. I, um, okay. And then I think we were going to uh, potentially add uh, a dialogue around uh, the ordinance training as part of an update for um, Tegan, but I'm not sure. Is she going to make it to the meeting? I, I didn't ask her that. I, it sounded like she was originally here. Yeah. yeah, she's right there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> She's, yeah. yeah, we're early. She's on time. <laughs> so we'll leave, we'll maybe just leave that as part of uh, Tegan's, Tegan's update. Uh, very good. Um, great. Uh, well, so uh, with those in consideration, I guess we'll just move through uh, approval of the minutes. Uh, has everybody seen uh, the August 19th minutes that were in the share folder and have a chance to review? Does anybody have any comments or changes that they'd like to discuss? I, I had a change. Um, I forget what it was now. I, I emailed Rose about it. It was about the, uh, it was about the change, it was about change orders and um, who paid what, what, and the amount of money paid for that. And I guess that was coming from the, the private loan, is what I, was what I found out Dark during the meeting. Dam. Oh, for the yeah. Dam. The funding. The dam funding, yeah. 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 So were the changes uh, integrated in the minutes that were circulated? No, I, I, I got to her after she circulated them. Okay. <coughs> Do you have that language, Rose? I think I. I can find it. Yeah. That would be on my home computer, not this. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I did change it and it sent it to Barbara. And, and, and actually, I have it also, so I can just it. change it when, before I post them tomorrow. I'll make that change. I've got Bill's email. Okay. So. Uh, well, I'm not sure where that would be a little, we, it, it, little imprudent to accept them, I guess, unless everybody's had a chance the, to review them. The minutes currently say <coughs> Bill as that the funds from any change orders were to come from the CPA private loan and not from town funds. The motion was seconded, voted, and carried. Does that not cover that? Were you in there time? I'm sorry. It, yeah, no, it, it says, Bill Davis asked that the funds from any change orders were to come from the CPA private loan. Oh, then, then they were changed. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. That's fine. That wasn't, I didn't, I didn't read the updated ones. I apologize. So it's good now. Good. Then I'd entertain a motion to accept. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I'm abstaining because I wasn't at the meeting. That's fair. Thank you, Anne. Um, and a uh, vote to approve the board orders that uh, had been circulated and posted uh, to the share folders. Everybody had a chance to review those? I have... The latest one I haven't seen, but I'll look at it in a second. Okay. Um, uh, questions. Uh, any questions on that other than those? Um, yeah, I had one. With Dubois and King, 
What was that for? The That's for uh, the engineers on the Curse Pond Dam. That was so it's Curse construction Pond. oversight, okay. is that yeah. what we're calling it? Yeah. Okay. They have, a, they have someone on site pretty much constantly, and then they you know, review the wrecks, they're monitoring to make sure the construction is done properly. Okay. So that was an unexpected cost? No, that, no, was, that, no, that, no, that was just that was part of, the, oh, part of their, okay. not original contract, but their secondary contract that you approved. All oh, right. And what was the Northeast Municipal um, reappraisal for $4,500? Oh, that, that's our reappraisal. That's, we're yeah, highly that, hired now. That's the firm that's doing the yep. reappraisal. You'll see a bill like that every month of the year, basically. 40, it's, it's spread 40, out. It, that paid $4,500? Spread out over, over the year. Ooh, okay. But it, remember, this is completely paid for um, through our fund, which is funded by the state. Um, so, uh, Bill, would you be, uh, I just saw that the last piece, yeah, that's yeah. fine. Okay, great. Uh, so can I get a motion to approve quarters as presented in the share folder? So moved. Second. Sure. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Thank you very much. And, uh, the, uh, approval of PDR, uh, 4261 errors and omissions uh, certificate from the town of Wester's. Um, so, if John, do you need to speak to that, or does anybody have any questions about the, the errors that were provided? Well, this is an unusual one. A property owner um, called our attention to it. Uh, we had not put the value of an extra lot, two acre lot that the property owner owned. Um, it, it wasn't part of the overall assessed value, so we added sixty-two thousand five hundred. And the property owner is aware of the yeah yeah of the adjustment. He's one who was wondering what was going on. Yes. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> is this the, was this the first year that, that that happened, or just got? It looks started? like it. Yeah. And I couldn't I couldn't find out where the error happened. Uh, we're dealing with this Byzantine software. Um, and we're lucky if this is the only one. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, does anybody have any other questions about the uh, the adjustment? Can I, can I get a motion to uh, approve the, the correction? I'll move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you very much. And thanks, John. I see you guys. Thank you. <laughs> uh, public comment. So uh, we're running a little ahead of schedule, but we'll take 15 minutes. Is anybody from the public? Uh, it's like just those that we have left on uh, on Zoom. Uh, is there anyone on Zoom uh, from the public who uh, would like to speak to anything that's not already represented on the uh, on the agenda? Everybody's on, on mute, but. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Chris. <laughs> uh, all right, well, with that, then I'll feel, I feel comfortable just kind of rolling on and considering the docket, we might as well. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a little uncomfortable moving forward on some of these until our guests arrive. Right. Yeah, yeah. But, but it can certainly tackle Welcome to Cal's. Yes. Uh, so the new Welcome to Callus program, uh, Barbara, do you want to just kind of mention what that's about? Yeah, absolutely. So thank you. Um, so this is something that I've wanted to do for a long time, and uh, previous world clerks were like, no, we don't need anything else to do. <laughs> so it occurred to me earlier this year that it could be a good program of Friends of Callus. So I uh, proposed it to the Friends of Callis Board, and they loved it and said yes, and they would be happy to sponsor this program. So I've been working on it for the past several months, putting materials together and soliciting uh, donated items for gift baskets. So this is intended to welcome new people who have moved to Callis, whether they have bought a home or they're renting, and to just welcome them a la Welcome Wagon. And so 
Uh, we launched it last Monday on September the 2nd and posted on Front Porch Forum. Uh, we've got these kiosks around town in all of our stores and post offices and the town office. And we're, I think we may put one at Maple Corner Community Center. And um, so that's publicizing it. It's on Front Porch Forum, it's on Facebook, it's on the town website and the Friends website. Um, and so the way we launched it on Monday was to say, if you have moved here within the last six months, let us know, because we're trying to play catch up with people who mm -hmm. moved here this year. We'll only do that like probably one more time, and then it's just as people arrive. So with that very first front porch forum post and putting this out last Monday, we've gotten seven responses, and I did four welcome visits over the weekend. Awesome. And awesome. gave people a little welcome basket, so I'd like to share one with you. Oh, this is for looks only. I'm not giving it to you. <laughs> You're not so first of all, all the baskets have been donated. Um, everybody who moves into town is getting, obviously, a town report Absolutely. with an explanation about town meeting and what this is for. People who are buying, who have bought a home, we're actually giving them Forever Palace. This is a $30 value. Yeah. So if they're renting, I'm mean, not giving <laughs> any renters, but, to, but the Palace Historical Society donated a bunch of these to us. So this is a really nice gift. Um, everybody is getting a Palace road map to keep in their front seat of their car. They're getting a few brochures that I've worked on. One of them is I call the, um, our governmental services brochure. And I'm going to give you all copies of these if you want them. Our governmental services brochure that kind of gives an overview of who we are in the town office, who you guys are, what we do, who to contact if you need, need to register your dog, register to vote, whatever. So that's one brochure they get. This is another brochure I developed. I call it the village brochure. It gives a little overview of the six villages of Calais and a little bit of historical background. You can see it's very brief um, and the uniqueness of each village. Uh, we have another brochure that's in the works um, from somebody else, and it's going to be an events brochure. It will be an outline of all the events, annual events we have year after year at the same time, like Black Five Festival and Fall Foliage Festival and so forth. I just don't have it from her yet. Um, and then each of the stores has given us a little brochure. We said so we have a Maple Corner brochure in here and an Adamac Co-op brochure. I am still waiting on the one from East Callis General Store. Um, and then they have a little jar of homemade granola. Mm -hmm. They have, uh, this is donated by Adrian Wade. We have cabbage cheese donated by Rachel Keys. We have fresh baked items, which Alice and Caldwell does for us. We have a $10 gift certificate to Schoolhouse Farm. Nice. And, and so the action for you guys is if you have any other suggestions, I'm going to give you a copy of each of these brochures. So that should be a one. Two, one, two, three, four, five. So it should be six. One for each of the select board members in Kari, because he hasn't even gotten all of this yet. That's the village brochure, the governmental services brochure. Do you each want a roadmap? <laughs> Pardon me? Yes. <laughs> okay, I'll take one of the ones. So basically, everything has been donated except for the printing of the brochures that I developed. So if you don't want it, give it back to me. Don't toss it. Give it back to me. How old is this? I know she called it the dump road and not Moscow. Yeah, exactly. Tegan, do we know how old that map is? I do not know how old that map is, but it was the most easily used one that we had. It was the one of the most interest and the easiest to read. Yeah. yeah. Um, so no, I still call it the dump road anyway. Yeah, so exactly. <laughs> so uh, two things is one, if, if you choose to read the brochures, if you have any suggestions, any other ideas that you have to enhance the welcome program, if you, I, I've been one, trying so hard to get little bottles of syrup as a oh, gift, yeah. and I have not been able to get anybody to donate those. If you have any other resources who can help us solicit uh, donated items to add to the gift basket, please, please, please let us know.
Any suggestions you have? Does the uh, Trails Committee have printed maps or brochures? They do, but they're, they are in color, oh, and there's okay. like 12 of them. And so there's information in one of those brochures yeah. about the trails and tell where they can go to find the maps. But I wasn't going to print those because such a small percentage of people would actually go mm -hmm. out and awesome. use them. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing I wanted to offer is I did just submit a report to the Friends of Palace yesterday with a spreadsheet of the responses we've gotten from people because um, right now I've done four visits and I have a fifth one this week. But we've gotten other responses from people that were like, this is so great. So if you guys would like me to email that spreadsheet to you of the responses we've gotten, I'd be happy to do that. I don't want to bother you with it unless you ask for it. What do you do when you go for a visit? Oh, so I first go, of course, introduce myself, um, tell them that this hey, with the program is sponsored by Friends of Palace in the Palace Town office. I go through the basket with them, just like I did with you, and explain what we're giving them and so forth, and that we simply were reaching out to welcome them, to let them know how they can get involved and engaged in the community. We end up talking about voter registration. We talk about dog registration. Um, uh, we talk about people, at, I've had three people ask me, where do you get your car fixed? <laughs> I said, okay, yeah. I said, this is just me personally talking. I can tell you where I take my car. I'm not speaking on behalf of the town. Um, I, was, I let people know how difficult it can be to find a primary care provider. And if they haven't found one, do that right away. Um, I, I talk to them about all the opportunities that we offer with the town and municipal opportunities, boards and committees and commissions. Each conversation is different. Mm -hmm. I spent probably an hour and 10 minutes with one person and 15 minutes with somebody else. It all depends on kind of their response and how many questions they have and how gregarious they are and how subdued they are. It's re I've really been enjoying it. That's great. Thank yeah. you for doing it all. Okay. Yeah. If you have any questions or <laughs> suggestions, please be in touch. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Yes. Awesome. Um, so the curb cover a little early. Yeah. I think. Mike's coming outside. Someone just yep. dropped off. Oh, no. Somebody else. Welcome. Can I interrupt and ask what you were all were saving for my report at the end? I missed it as I was walking in. Oh, uh, no, there was just clarification, clarification oh, whether or not we wanted to add anything about the ordinance chain, uh, oh, okay. uh, training. Okay. Uh, I couldn't remember where we left that either as an update um, from you in or I. <laughs> under, we didn't specify how it's going But it's, ordinance discussions are on the uh, yeah. On the agenda, by the way, so we're, <laughs> is appropriate. What you found us. Um, so uh, it would be appropriate, I guess, to uh, do the application for 402 uh, Butterfield Road. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Great. Uh, has there, everybody had a chance to uh, to review that? So, um, right. Um, John, uh, the road foreman, did inspect it and had no concerns. And if you saw Neil Makers. Recommendation. He he suggested a condition that uh, construction equipment be cleaned afterwards, just because of the invasive species. Motion to accept. With, with the stipulations with, yeah. that Neil has mm -hmm. asked for. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you send me that? Uh, I might not. Have. Okay. So I guess that would just be uh, as they're as they're leaving uh, the property. Is that yeah? Right? Yeah. So they don't track any weed seeds with them or something. Mm -hmm. I have a question: Is this a, a? It's essentially a shared driveway. Is it um, a subdivision? It is. It's a two lot subdivision. Right. <laughs> so, so, oh, you're Jen. Uh, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it is a subdivision. Uh, that was set aside by Vermont Land Trust in a certain area on the property. So, so they pretty much directed where the driveway needs is, to be. Is there any chance there would ever be a third 
No. Lot. Okay. No. I'm just asking because if it if you do a third lot, then it becomes a, a private road, and then it's a little different. Okay. But since that's never going to happen, we won't worry about it. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Uh, so there's a, a motion to accept on the on the floor from Bill. Are there any other as, questions? As conditioned, right? As conditioned uh, for uh, meeting the uh, uh, equipment before leaving the premise. Okay. And as the applicant, you have that information. You, I just got it, and I will certainly make sure that happens. Yeah. Do we do like pressure washing or? Uh, yeah, I assume that there's uh, you're working with an excavator uh, yes. to do the work. Uh, yeah, so the uh, the request has come from uh, the uh, town's uh, tree warden, um, yes. who often participates um, in in curb cut applications when, uh, when it makes sense to do so. Um, and his only note um, was that because there are uh, invasive species. Uh, in and around the curb cut that uh, any heavy equipment um, just get pressure washed before they're transported away from the site so that, that doesn't uh, transport any any seeds or invasives with them. But, no, I understand completely yeah, yeah. and I agree. I've been trying to get rid of this stuff since I moved Well, thank you. Um, and yeah, so that'll be added to the uh, to the copy of the curb cut application uh, with the approval. Um, and so if you can just make the excavator aware of that condition, uh, that would be great. Hello. Um, and then uh, the road, or I guess John will uh, need to sign off on it when it's completed. Yeah, one of those will. Yeah. Okay. We'll inspect it. Thank you. All right. Uh, so uh, is there a second then? One second. Okay, thanks, Jamie. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No? Thank you. Thanks. So uh, we'll get you a copy of the paperwork um, within the next day or so. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving on. Back and forth between tabs. Uh, the right of use permit uh, for Washington Electric. Uh, so that's a permit for uh, work within the right of way uh, along the uh, North Callis and Duger Brook intersections for communications line, or is that power? Oh, power is power. Yep. Uh, uh, that would be coming from the east side of uh, North Callis Road, uh, going under the road and then up uh, Duger Brook uh, to the west uh, to a lot that's one or two lots yep. um, up, up the road from uh, North Callis Road. Um, and it right. seems pretty straightforward to me. There was a question, I guess, uh, when it came in, whether or not they, there was any rationale for going in the town yep. travel uh, lane as opposed to adjacent. Yep. Uh, My understanding is they're looking to go along the edge of the road. Oh, okay. Um, the first question that came up was, well, why not overhead? Exactly. And um, Brian from WEC is here tonight. He can, he can speak to that, but apparently it was an uh, easement issue. They, were, they weren't given permission uh, by neighbors to, to establish a poll. So. Is that, uh, that right, Brian? Yes, we tried to uh, take a couple of routes there. Uh, tried going overhead um, the whole way. Um, and then we try to um, get a pole across the street and then go underground on private property again. Uh, and at the end, that, that just didn't work out. So um, we also have an issue with wetlands in the backside of the property. We met with wetlands um, and they said, uh, even if we were given the easement, we would not be able to um, go underground through that wetlands. It's in the corner uh, between Fair and uh, Malone uh, in the roadside. There's a um, there's some defined wetlands right there. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the, the only option that the state gave us was going down through the uh, travel portion of the road. Well, the, the only 
real concern there, as with the last one with up on uh, Worcester Road, was crossing a culvert. And when I spoke with Brian, he said they'll do everything they can to go around the culvert. If they have to go underneath, our recommendation be, you know, go well below and a concrete cap would probably be a good idea because culverts are meant to get clogged and be placed from time to time. Yeah. I mean, the only uh, culvert that we saw was over on the Malone property. So if there's something I miss, um, please let me know. But we were going to stop short of that culvert and come up a pole at that point. So I, as far as I could tell, there was no culverts between the uh, starting point and getting to the Malone property. But I, yeah, if, you, if we ran into one, the first thing we try to do is go around it versus going under it. That would be a, a last option, uh, trying to go underneath that culvert. What's the depth? We're gonna try to get four feet uh, we're using a piece of equipment that's kind of new to us uh, that a contractor has. It's called a vibe plow. We give uh, we have a uh, cable that's already in conduit. It's on a roll. Uh, he puts it on a, uh, um, a piece of machinery that actually takes it off the roll and plows it directly uh, into the ground. Uh, then a piece of machinery comes in behind. It's it's less evasive uh cleaner job versus digging so four feet to go are you actually going to be digging up the road bed excuse me will you be digging up the road bed at all or are you over out uh, in the right of way outside of the road bed we're going to be right at the road edge i mean if we go down the left side of duber duger brook uh, there's some trees and, and stuff that are fairly close to the uh, road. So we would be just, again, the goal is to get off just off the travel portion of the road. Kari, the road crews reviewed this and it all looks fine to them. Yeah. Okay. Really concerned with the culvert, but. Um... Yeah. And the, the, the permit language says if the hardened surface of the road is disturbed, it'll be restored. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this is a gravel road, so there's layers. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the surface I'd be concerned about if they were digging into the road bed and all. Mm -hmm. okay. um, well, we have you, Ryan. I mean, it seems like this is uh, this is a request that's coming up a little more frequently. I think this is the third third one that we, oh, well, I guess uh, the second one from WEC that we've looked at, and in probably about six months. Um, is this? Uh, I, I mean, I think there are are pretty obvious advantages to uh, to putting things underground from kind of a infrastructure hardening perspective, but uh, it, it surely complicates the, the process and, and adds a, a certain amount of expense. Is, is this kind of a trend that you're seeing or is, uh, is there anything in particular that's driving this? It sounds like there might also be some some easement issues too. Um, yeah. it's, couple. It, it, it's getting more and more difficult uh, as a whole to get easements from people. Um, this one is a little more driven um, by wetlands. In this case, uh, the one over on Worcester Road was strictly could not get easements from anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, we did have another one pop up in another town. So I, I think it's a, a trend in such a way that it's just getting more and more difficult to get these easements to get stuff, get stuff done. Where WEC ends up terminating the underground and then coming back up, are, are, is, are you guys uh, putting infrastructure equipment that, uh, that would make it easier to tap off of that from your primary to carry on any, any underground service uh, to other properties further up Duger Brook in this example? Or, um, how does that generally get get terminated. It's not, when it's underground, we uh, install an underground vault and put a transformer on it. 
in this yeah. case, because of the wetlands um, that kind of bleeds over to the Malone property, we're, we're going to terminate on a pole. Mm -hmm. um, so that would, uh, for for future use, that'd be an, uh, a much easier transition to take off that pole and keep going down the road overhead. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't, I don't see any other uh, particular issues. It's unfortunate that, <laughs> that to add the expense, you know, for the uh, for the property developer, but um, but that's the way it goes in some of these cases. Um, uh, I'll take the opportunity for a plug, uh, Brian. It, the more of these that uh, end up going underground, uh, the more helpful it is uh, for us as a, as a town a municipality to have uh, as constructed documentation um, on, on the record. So the, the drawings are, are good and generally put us all in, in the right frame of mind uh, in space and time. But, um, you know, as we have kind of turnover uh, at the municipality and uh, uh, in, uh, in the road crew, um, it really helps to kind of help identify where, where these, particularly where the terminations are, if we can have documentation that isn't, isn't a fully surveyed plan, but does have some, uh, some dimensions that reference, you know, how you can might triangulate to find these, these features where they're buried. Um, uh, the last couple of times we've had, you know, dig safe, try to identify a, a location. Uh, they were either flat wrong or didn't quite nail it. And we, we hit, hit stuff anyway. In those cases, it was communications lines, but, um, uh, any record that we can have uh, after construction that, that can better identify the as built conditions, that would be great. We, I will uh, get you some kind of as built after it's installed and we'll also use the, uh, the this, there's some warning tape out now that makes it easier to train. Yeah. So uh, we will specify that um, going in the ground to hopefully make it easier down the road to be, to be located. So, this, so that tape is buried more shallow, is that right? Yeah, it's generally just above it. Yeah. We're going to try to get four feet. That's, I think that's about as far as the, this plow, the advantage of the plow, it's less evasive. You know what I mean? You're not digging a three foot wide bucket the whole way. It's, it's a cut of six, I think six, eight inches, maybe more. Um, so if it's not deep enough, then, uh, if we, you know, if we run into a ledge or something, then we're going to dump some concrete on it and uh, obviously let you know where that is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Brian. Um, so fresh, I guess, fresh motion to uh, accept. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. I appreciate the attendance. All right. Thanks for uh, considering us. Very good. Um, moving on to the highway department, which uh, we're still running ahead of schedule. I think it's okay. Yeah. I think Toby's going to come down and get us started. Okay. Um, so we're going to start with the speed studies. So we got results from four of the five roads. They're doing the fifth right now. So we have uh, Adamant Road, Pekin Brook, Lightning Ridge, and Work Callis. Mm -hmm. And they ran these for a week in August. And this is their typical protocol. So they get a large enough sample size. Uh, and it was for seven days. And then I think these locations were selected by the uh, select board either last year or maybe even the year prior in relation to potentially changing speed limits. So these have been in the works for a little while. Um, I think the speed limits are 35 on each of these roads in most cases. Um, I look those up. I think on Pekin Brook, it, it's actually 30. 30. Mm -hmm. And it was 35 on the other three. Okay. Okay. Um, and so based on the results, it looks like, so just a refresher, if you haven't read the uh, setting speed limits manual in a while, the state recommends uh, 
using the 85th percentile, the speed at which 85% of drivers are going at or below, use that to set the speed limit, unless there's other circumstances like a blind, blind curve or something like that. And I think the logic of that is that most, most of us have an intuitive sense of what's safe. And if you set the speed limit artificially low or you know, too low, what results is you just have more people violating the, the speed limit. Um, and unless you have a way of enforcing that, it's pretty challenging to get people to slow down. So it's, it's more of a gauge than anything else. But anyway, if you're, if you're using that logic, um, it looks like Lightning Ridge and, and Peak and Brook are um, at, at the, about the same, the right place. Adamant, the 85th percentile was higher, it's at 42. And on the flats of North Callis Road, it was up to 45 and a half. So people are driving quite quite a bit faster there. I'm really guilty of that. <laughs> Curry, yep. can we just add to what you said? It's my understanding that if we don't base it on these studies, unless we have a really good reason, then the um, state police will refuse to enforce it. Oh, I don't know about that, actually. Yeah. I, you know, we need to clarify that. The police, excuse me. Yeah. I don't mean state police. Whoever it is that enforces it. Sheriff. If the Washington County Sheriff. Whoever. But the, it won't be enforced unless we can bit back up. And the, or it won't yes. hold up in court. But yeah, I think that's, yeah. that's the case. Well, in court, if somebody's strong enough to challenge you, but most skiers at that. They get a ticket. They, Hope the cop won't show up at the, you know, at the hearing, but if the cop shows up, they're gonna, they'll say, well, I wasn't speeding. The cop will show them the radar. That's the end of the game. You know, unless he has a lawyer, you know, most lawyers are even smart enough to go, I shouldn't say that. Uh, <laughs> but they don't even look at the, at the, at that part of it. They just look at the, is the radar proper? Did they tune it properly? Et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but I, I speak about lightning ridge rule, I don't know about the rest. Well, I, I, don't, I don't know if Kari was finished. No, yeah, no, I'm, I'm good. Um, I'm looking here, you know, at the, at, at the manual, or the cop off the, off the manual, and you know, you're right about the, uh, there are, you can use mitigating circumstances. Um, and Lightning Ridge Road, there's curves, there are curves, uh, like Tom McCarroll's house. Uh, I guess one car went off the road at one time, went a little too fast. Um, there are farms, and I guess we're going to really. Um, there are kids walking in the road, there are um, bicyclists. It's a pretty busy road. And 35, if you look, even though it's an 85th percentile, what the state recommends in their statute, they don't, they get, they have an out for you. If you look at the speed limit down through here, you see many of the drivers are going between 25 to 30. In fact, the majority, uh, I would say, are going under. 35. So I think it's speed limit. You have a good legal, defensible uh, argument for making speed limit 30 miles an hour. You're talking about just Lightning Ridge Road? Right? Lightning Ridge Road. I can't speak for the rest. I just speak about Lightning Ridge Road. Remember, if it stays that way for five years, you got to be. It's enforceable. I, I remember, uh, I think it was Rick Keen uh, telling me, very city, any industry say, they just change the speeds. And, and five years, and people go into South Main Street or North Main Street, I should say, it's 25 miles an hour. And you know, most people follow that speed limit. Um, uh, that's my take on it. That's the way it lives. I went in the drawer and watched the cars go by, especially school. School kids, uh, parents in the morning rushing to school, um, like they're in a hurry, like they can't get there in time, things like that. So. I would, uh, that's my Oh, topic. that's interesting. So, because it was done in August when there was no school. Right. That's so, right. you're saying the problem actually happens. Well, it happens at other all the time, but there, yeah. there is a nature of the beast. Uh, you know, the school bus is nearly empty or empty, and the parents drive the kids to school, which is fine. But they're not, they always seem to be late. <laughs> and they're looking down the road, um, trying to get there by nine. Um, anyway. I think 30 under the circumstances of all the way the road is shaped and the traffic, uh, people walking and arms and everything else should be 30. I mean, that's that's a good defensible argument there. A little lower, we probably couldn't get away with that, but 30 is a defensible. So. Thank you, Tuck. Yeah, Tuck, you. I find out this, this summer because I got a lot of little black cabs in there. 
I got a lot of people walking their kids and stopping and looking. And that road is pretty busy. Michael, you know, you know that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And uh, <clears throat> I'm concerned about it costs us a lot of money to fence that farm so we would so the calves would get the road and get the road. I mean, I bet we spent over three thousand dollars just to fence it. Just no labor, just fencing the posts and big fence and cedar posts and wire just to keep it sure. And we run four strands, a lot of it, just to make sure that well, these guys going by here ain't going to kill a calf or something. You know, black angus calves are worth a lot of money right now. Uh, nine, even a thousand dollars for a day old calf. So I guess we can afford to fence it a little bit better, but. So I hate to see him get home. <coughs> the road is, is probably a little, a little too wide and lately, but just certain places. Yeah. For speeding. Um, there are places where it's a little narrower, uh, like Tom Carl's area. But uh, going down from the hill from uh, probably the old schoolhouse on the right, uh, where, where uh, Dinah, um, oh, brain dead here. Uh, yes, name is there. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> How it's going down to there. It's where they start to rev up. Uh, uh, but I will say that uh, uh, when they, if they see something in the road, sometimes they slow down. But uh, it's just, I think people drive the speed limit they see. And if it's too slow, you're right, they won't. If it's 20 miles an hour, I'm not going to go to 20. But 30 is not unreasonable. Peking Bluff has 30 miles an hour, and that has plenty of space to drive if you want to go faster, as you should. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is, is, I'm just saying it's not unreasonable, guys. Gals. Yeah. Our roads are too wide in this town. Yeah, uh, Doug, I, I don't want to get into the, the width of the road. I, okay. I, you know, that's been, it's been registered and, and, uh, and you know. I, what do you want to get on? What's that? What do you want to get on? Well, well I, I do want to, I, I, I appreciate this data finally coming in. It's taken a while for us to finally see it. I got a couple of too late. Yeah, after schools closed and everything. Oh no! I, I mean, I, I I think there's a a, a good argument for uh, reducing the speed on on Lightning Ridge relative to one the speed limit on Peak and Brook um, and the volume of traffic that's on that road, which is more um, and uh, and the apparent you know observation of that speed limit um, and. Uh, relative to uh, you know the school being on uh, on Lightning Ridge, uh, other farm active farms being on Lightning Ridge, um, and and the reduced traffic, the reduced volume of traffic that's on uh, on that road. I mean, there's some continuity for sure, um, and you know I think the speed. I would imagine anecdotally the speed signs having having a active monitoring speed sign on roads that we feel get a higher use of traffic and, and a higher issue of compliance, um, having signs stay on those roads permanently for monitoring purposes. You know, one of the things that those signs give us a window into is the time of uh, day that we should be uh, targeting enforcement. Um, and. Uh, and that's a real asset to us when we've got limited resources. Because I think that at the end of the day, that's really what it's going to come down to. We can raise the speed limit or decrease the speed limit, but if we don't, if we don't find a way to deal with the enforcement element of it, it's it's going to become a moot point. Um, that's true. But I, you know, I think you're right that people generally, uh, generally generally have uh, have a tendency to um, to observe the speed limits, at least I would hope so. But um, uh, so then I guess the, the question is, uh, you know, how do we how do we make that decision? And one of the things that we've been talking about uh, doing and we'll be discussing later uh, in the meeting is the formation of a um, of an ordinance committee um, uh, that will be tasked by the select board to uh, make changes to ordinances uh, and review changes to them um, in a in a warned, transparent way, um, and in a way that doesn't get bogged down by the select board's uh, uh, 
otherwise full, full agenda, but is still largely informed by the priorities of the select board. Um, and, and the road issues are, are right on the top of that list. Um, so if we can get that formed and, uh, and appointed, uh, then making, making these changes uh, and being responsive to, uh, to the petition that had circulated uh, a year and a half ago is, is the next step, I think, from my perspective. Does anybody have any other comments? Or, um, Ari, what, what is the turnaround time to get a road study done? Uh, it's hard to say. I, I know these were requested uh, at least yeah. last year. It was over a year to get these done. He requested them a year ago last spring, and he was actually going to do them th that summer, but then the flood hit. Okay. And so he, you know, Lightning Ridge Road was washed out and, and <laughs> parts of it. So he, it didn't make any sense to do the study then. And so the only one he did was the one on the hard tops. And I think they prioritized us this year doing five. Uh, I, mean, I don't mind asking again, but I, I have no expectation that we would get another one this, you know, in 2024. Yeah, so I, I think the other big question there is if, uh, that we've been kind of working through that dialogue a little bit with Toby, but um, originally when we were talking about the radar signs, some of them were gonna be more portable and mobile, and some of them obviously uh, more fixed um, and uh, they've, they've proved to be more fixed than mobile in, in most cases, with the only handful of exceptions. But I think uh, I, part of the charge, I think, to this uh, ordinance committee is going to be um, having a process for identifying which roads uh, can be targeted for study <coughs> signs. If we have one or two signs that can be deployed in a more mobile fashion so that we can most of them have a recording feature. So we can do these internally um, as long as we have the training and can roll through them. And they could look at Lightning Road Drug right now and see what the signs are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and so making sure that we have people who are trained to do that and then that we have the appropriate signs that can be moved around. And as well as, you know, the point's been brought up in the last couple of meetings, um, you know, who's choosing where to put these signs and when to move them. And so I think part of what I'd like to see uh, would be uh, a, a process for identifying what, what the roads are uh, relative to feedback from the community. I got two signs on my road. <laughs> yeah. They don't work. And they, they don't work. They don't, don't work. work? No, they don't. Like, they might do it for a day because they know what's there. And after that, they know there's no patrol on this road. There's none. And you know, we look back at this and we see where there's more traffic on yeah. this road than Lightning Ridge. But you know what? There's only one, two, three houses, maybe four, on this road. On Lightning Ridge Road, we got what? 25, 30. You know? People that are, this guy just walked in. Give him a chance. He, he lives on Lightning Ridge Road. He's got kids. He lives just beyond my farm. I'm going down that hill. He'll tell you how fast they come. Yeah. Right? Go ahead. Easily over 35. I don't know. Yeah. I drive 35 and I know how fast that is. Yeah. And I got a two year old and it is scary watching these people drive down. Yeah. So. And, and so part of what we're, we're trying to decide here is what, what are the mechanisms for identifying when and where uh, we, get, we get the sheriff's department to sit where they need to sit. Um, and we were, before you came in, we were reviewing kind of the data that came in from the uh, CVRPC uh, traffic studies that, um, that pull the data and uh, give us a, a range of, of where we can consider setting, uh, setting speed limits. And uh, right now, it, it seems like the consideration among, amongst this group uh, would be to look at reducing the speed on, on Lightning Ridge, uh, at least down to 30. Um, and then, you know, I think it's, a, it's really only a decision of, of the second to that, it's a matter of, of figuring out how we, how we target enforcement. And we have a pretty limited sheriff's department budget. Um, and last year it got increasingly painful because they, their uh, hourly rate went up pretty significantly, reducing, reducing our hours of coverage by, by quite a bit, like 30%. Um, no, half. Half, The, the yeah. price doubled. And we had to cut the hours in half. So, as a community, we're going to have to 
decide to fund that, um, but then to, that's still not likely going to be enough to get us the coverage that we want. So we're going to have to be really smart about how we uh, how we choose to target target enforcement and and like we're just right on the top of the list. Um, I'm willing to put two tractors right side by side in my door here, so they can't see the tractor. They can't see the cruiser either way. <laughs> they can't see it okay. until they go by my house, 40, 50 miles an hour, and down by the top of the hill, hell, in the spring of the year, the car's in the road, right? Yeah. In the air. Yep. Yeah. In the air. It's dangerous. And you said you were talking about this. But his road has got to be fixed. I talked to you today about that road. It's got to be fixed. I'm going to get killed there. There might be Toby up here. Because with his light light off, because he comes out to you one year. Last year, with his light going, the siren going, and Jesus, I'm telling you, down that hill, you bet down there, it was like this, you know? Yeah, his light come on. Yeah? <laughs> he made it up, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. Well, he can't even mow his lawns in that way. See, so every time the guy who drives truck, he loves to draw grass. He's yeah, Doug, Doug, I, we, I, we, I don't, I don't mean to be rude well, or cut well, you well, off. Well, well, what do you want to we, talk about? We, we're trying to, I'm trying to stay focused on, on the speed study and and decide what what we need for next steps here. So I think um, what you proposed is is absolutely right. I mean, if we're going to change the speed limit, it's got to be done by ordinance. Right. We're going to talk in a few minutes about creating an ordinance committee, and we're going to direct them actually a second priority. We have a couple of very top priority things to work on, and then we're going to ask them to turn their attention to roads. And at that point, they can hold a public hearing. They can let people come in and talk about any of the road ordinances. Mm -hmm. And we'll have that discussion. Uh, and I guess the other thing that is kind of a complicating matter here, uh, and not something that should be overlooked is the expense of changing uh, the the speed limit sign. So uh, this, we'll need a count of signs that would then need to be replaced for uh, for any of these roads that are being recommended uh, for for adjustments. Uh, because we'll need to we'll need to appropriate those funds. Uh, I know we have a signed budget, but I don't know to what extent to what extent that gets used annually, mostly to replace stolen signs. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are some reflectivity issues with some of the signs. Anyway. We have reflectivity yeah. issues. We also have size issues and compliance issues. So obviously, anything that's yeah. that's going to get a speed limit sign is going to take priority in having having adequate signage uh, added to the road with with updated uh, signs, but. We should, need an we should be careful for that in our budgeting. Yeah. 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 My nice wife was, she's complaining about cowboys, by my farm, cowboys, you know, sorry, cowboys, car farm. She wants, to, some of these signs should have a cowgirl on there <laughs> with a big tail or a pony tail. She complains <laughs> about that. She does. Huh? She's, she's right. got a right, right? Yeah. Yes, she does. Well, well, <laughs> uh, so, uh, Toby, you're coming at the tail end of a discussion about um, about speed uh, studies and mm -hmm. uh, a future directive uh, for for an ordinance committee. Um, I think you were going to report on uh, on some mobility and. Uh, uh, data collection by chance? Um, yeah, so um, the road crew and Kari and I talked about where we should put um, the other remaining radar signs. So the discussion said um, we should do it on villages because that's where we want people to slow down. So we already have Maple Corner taken care of. Um, so the thought was to, and also um, out on Route 14, we have East Callis Village on Route 14 taken care of with radar signs. So the suggestion was to do, um, I guess there have been some complaints about people in Adamant going through the village too fast, so yep. um, we would put one on either side of the store down there, one on Haggett and one on Adamant, the other side. Um, there was also talk about um, putting one above the school so people would slow down going down to the school. Um, so I put a stake there on uh, Lightning Ridge 
prior to where you get to the school. That would essentially put all the signs out into, into the field. And uh, so there was one other sign that had been in Maple Corner that was not working. I've uh, talked to the manufacturer in Montreal. I've got the parts coming to fix that. And that's a sign that we can actually, it's light enough to move to different places in town so we can choose. If some complaint comes up, we can put one on a, a traffic sign that's already in place or put up another sign itself. It's sort of a mobile device. And, uh, and then at some point, um, Kari and Bill are going to learn how to take the data off the signs as well as myself. So that um, essentially you can generate reports about what's happening at each one of those locations. Great. There was one more sign that we were going to put going into the North Calus, or yeah, North Calus Village. Right. Somewhere on there, we haven't really. Somewhere in there, we haven't located it. So, a question: We don't know even know which side of the village, whether you're going north or south, coming down from Foster yeah, Hill. To to be determined. Okay. Might be more I'm gonna catch you. Maybe we put the more mobile one there, like temporarily on either side, and just see if it makes sense to have it on one side versus the other yeah. more permanently. Or, you know, we could add it to a sign budget in the next year to, to start adding more of these as we want to start putting more permanent features, um, the, I guess. The other thing I think that's, that's available I, on the new signs, I haven't checked, but you can actually have them work as a radar sign without the flashing lights. So you could actually leave it there for a while and see if after you turn it back on, if there's any differentiation between people's behavior when the sign is on or when it's not. So that would be something that we can look at yeah. scheduling to see if there's, you know, if the signs are effective or not effective. That's a good idea. Yeah. Is there a decision to make off of that uh, at the moment? Well, uh, that's, that's a plan. Those sound like good locations. I don't know if it needs a formal approval, but if it, if it works for you, we'll go ahead. And... Is the sign on Lightning Ridge, is that at the halfway down the hill past Lilies, mm -hmm. around the corner there? Or uh, is that one going to be? Yeah, so the one, that, the one that we put in that's going up the hill will move down to going down the hill instead of that one there. It's, um, so essentially, we'll just relocate that one sign. Yeah, there's been talk of that about it. people are going really fast down that hill. Yeah, that's essentially it's okay. going down at the bottom. It'll be at the bottom of the hill before they then head past Gray Road. Cool. Well, you ought to have one right there before you get to big ditches, you know what I mean? On my name Mm-hmm. Huh? I know you got caught one time down there last year. Sure. Huh? Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to go down and see if you were still in the road or in the truck, what the hell you were. Remember that? <laughs> okay. Uh, so I think that uh, that sounds like we've got that pretty well covered, and we'll save the, the balance of it for uh, the ordinance uh, committee uh, discussion and try to set a yeah. timeline for that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think you'll see a lot more speed on when, when the schools run it. We'll be able to see that on our yeah. radar sign. So we'll have right. this as yeah. a good yeah, thorough baseline. Yeah, right. That money on compare it to. Data from the school year. All right. Thank you. Thank um, you. Moving to the rest of the highway department. Um, so, Moscow Woods, yeah. if I can yep. jump in. Yes. Um, so, remember, you approved changing the plan of action there to go ahead and get some temporary repairs this year using the grant money um, and then proceed with getting us. Um, so it has a mitigation grant, isn't it, to replace the entire bridge because it is so decrepit and it needs a full replacement. So um, DeWolf Engineering has provided a, um, a plan uh, designed for the uh, temporary repair, and now we've got to go out and get a contractor um, uh, that can execute the work this year because it's this calendar year that needs to be done to access the grant. So anticipating we may have trouble getting two or more bids, which is what's required by our purchasing policy, or asking you to consider this an emergency situation. We'll, we'll still try to get two bids, but in case we are only able to get one, uh, we just need to move forward. And do you need us to do something? Say that's okay? I th yeah, I think a, a formal approval that we can, I think it's better to do it now than wait yeah, till yeah. we have just one what, bid. What does that mean? <laughs> We declare that it's an emergency, and therefore you get to pick 
<coughs> well, I don't care for if you don't get multiple bidders. We'll, we'll still bring the bid to you for final approval, but but mm -hmm. um, and maybe that's the way to handle it once once we have a bid. But I, um, again, it, it seems it seems more appropriate to say that this would qualify as an emergency um, now rather than wait till the eleventh hour. And, I don't know. I'm not sure, but um, so so the real issue is so we've been working to do a, a larger repair to that right. dam, including the the uh, abutments as well as the the structural steel, but then um, it was decided that the dam is going to be removed, and the dam is what causes the problem now, because the 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 width between the abutments under the bridge is only 17 feet, and when they take the dam out, the bankful width of that stream will be over 35 feet. So essentially it's a constriction and it's a hazard in the future. So the, the point of not spending a lot of money to temporarily or bring it back up to a 10 or 20 years life is to um, agree that when the dam goes, it's going to be a hazard. So we're going to apply for a hazard mitigation grant to deal with the bridge. And whether we get it or we don't get it, that's going to be up in the air. Um, the next cycle of mitigation um, with the state of Vermont is at 100% instead of the usual 75 or 80%. So um, we've also talked to the friends of the Winooski that are trying to um, pair their dam removal with our bridge as a total package. I don't know if that's going to work, but that's going to be the approach we take. Um, so, so essentially, it's an emergency because we just need to get it done. The, the state grant to repair the bridge expires at the end of the year. So work would have to be done or I'd have to get an extension. And, and would it cover um, what needs to be done? Oh yeah, by a long shot. That will, that yeah, this is just a short, uh, just a temporary fix of just putting in some steel girders as opposed to redoing the whole foundation and all the rest. And it's a, but that sounds like a change to what the original request was. Will the state accept that? Yeah, they will. They will. Yeah. Great. So the emergency is we need to get the steel fixed before the winter comes. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. So, so the deadline is short, and that's the, the problem in trying to find a, a contractor on a short basis and get three bids and actually get the work done is the reason that we're thinking it might end up being an emergency purchase. Um, what's the what's the time proposed time frame for getting uh, getting a bid circulated or a call for bids? Um, um, immediately. Um, immediately. Yeah, DeWolf is working on it. I've talked with Chris Temple and he was going to call directly to a couple of vendors he knew that would do that kind of work and he hasn't gotten back to me yet, but he's pursuing it. And is I guess my question is, the follow-up question is whether or not it's likely to have somebody uh, and a need to make a decision on on a particular uh, bid you know, between now and the next meeting. Oh, and imagine it can wait till, for two weeks. Yeah, I can't tell you when I'm going to see the, you know, where there might be somebody who's a contractor who can provide the work. I, I don't have a timetable for that. Okay. Yeah, I, I would say you need I to would, approve it. Yeah. So, you know, then we can delegate the authority to approve it. No, uh, yeah, so, so I think that it would probably make sense then in, in that case to uh, put it on the agenda for the next meeting. Um, and if there's only one, then we'll declare it an emergency okay. purchase and, and or consider the approval kind of as, as part of the same package of decisions um, uh, as opposed to just, just declaring the emergency now. So this has a required RFP. Uh, no, you have to. You, you have to. You, no, RFP is for a formal sealed bid process. Is required for anything above two hundred fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. If it's between twenty five and two fifty, you you must get at least two bids, unless it's an emergency. There's a few okay. other exceptions to that. And, and those two bids don't have to go out. Don't have to be achieved via an RFP. Right. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and, and so I guess I'm, I'm, my logic is that is that it, it's going to feel like an emergency if we're only getting one person willing or able to put in 
yeah. bid and we still need to get it done yeah. um, and need to award that bid. So it would probably make sense to, to consider that as a, uh, as a kind of a collective action. Um, and we'll, we'll put it on the agenda for the next meeting. Um, are we okay with that? Yeah. Uh, issue? Okay. Uh, so that'll bring us uh, to uh, proposing the maintenance agreements uh, for the East Cattle Stormwater Project. Yeah. Um, so you saw drafts of these yeah. agreements uh, last meeting. Reminder, the uh, Regional Planning Commission is, is paying for two stormwater projects in East Calais because they identified them to be uh, top polluters in the region, at least in the Kingsbury branch region. Um, and, um, you know, there are always some strings attached to you. What's required here is that the town agree to maintain these sites for 10 years. And most of that work is cleaning um, you know, if, uh, once a year, bringing in a vector truck to basically suck out all the debris. Um, and then there's some also, especially after large rain events, monitoring, um, just to make sure um, that things are still functioning well, some mowing, things like that. So they ask that um, the select board approve them first, and then they, they will ask the local landowners that are affected to um, this also sign the agreements. And uh, I shared, since, since meeting with you three weeks ago, I shared these with the uh, road crew. They do definitely have concerns about adding maintenance to, um, to their workload um, over the year. Um, I found out that there is uh, funding potentially available through the Regional Planning Commission for this kind of work that they will support, you know, um, bringing in a contractor. Like, we don't own a backer truck, we're not about to purchase one, so we would have to contract that out anyway. So as, um, as much as we could contract out and have funded um, through the Regional Planning Commission, that's, that will be what we want to do. Um, it, it, you know, it's, it, it's, it's definitely problematic to, to commit to adding work to the workload. However, I will say that the gully erosion that's down below the um, post office is a very serious issue. You kind of have to go down there to see it, um, but it's, it's a matter of time until that erosion um, backs up and starts to undermine Masco and its roads. So something needs to be done. This is a solution that will allow us to have someone else pay for it. So okay. I, I would, I would well, Couldn't the road crew at least do the inspections? Yeah. So they, they, yeah. So they wouldn't have to all, we wouldn't have to hire at all the work. Right, yeah. right. I don't, I don't, yeah, I see, foresee we're, we'll have some role in it. But and as we much have this factor. I love learning that word. It's going to be a great Scrabble word. <laughs> <laughs> um, this this factor truck would only have to come in once a year. Once so. a year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and um, the other parts of the process. Just so you're aware, the state um, we've applied for a permit from the state. The town is the applicant, and but but we have the regional planning commission is doing all the administrative work. There's an engineer that's helping with it, and. Um, on Wednesday night, there's a development review board hearing because there's a conditional use permit that's as part of this. So um, it, it's getting fairly late in the season, as we were just discussing, and so it's looking like this this project, these projects probably won't be constructed until 2025. But anyway, we want to keep moving. We sent out letters to the to the neighbors. Um, we're just moving through the process. I, you know, I being the, the highway department, I, they are concerned about this and they're, uh, you know, it's something new like that. And some of them, you know, have to, have to go view this thing within 24 hours after a storm event. So I think there's going to be procedures that need to be set up and reminders and, um, yeah, it's, it's going to be something different. Uh, yeah. Part of the inspection is that if there's rain events greater than two and a half inches, I think, then we're, we need to go in, log, you know, and inspect and see if there's any damage done or any, you know. Two and a half inches where? <laughs> yeah. Phil, you're concerned that just the inspection of, of just the inspection is still too much? Well, it's just something else that they have to do now if, if the roads are out. 
do you want to go have them inspect this or do you want to go have them fix the roads mm -hmm. and take the trees out mm -hmm. that are covered on top of the roads? It's one of those, it's just another thing that has to happen. Mm -hmm. um, I bet you they're going to want to go open the roads first before they go down and, and look for the sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, we'll have to, you know. What is. What's what happens if we don't happen? do it? <laughs> yeah, what's, I mean, what's the burden of proof for, for completing well, this? I guess we're going to be law. keeping a lot, right? We're keeping a lot, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what the penalty is. Uh, I read yeah. it. It said that if we didn't do it, they would tell us that we had to do it. And they would set up a timeline. Yeah. So. You said you would do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if um, someone else might be able to do it. That's just so like we've had the Curtis Pond Dam monitors for all yeah. these years. I wonder if someone in East Callis um, might be able to, or two people might be able to take that on. There is a pretty robust volunteer sector in East Callis. I can think of a couple names off the top of my head that would be willing to do this if it was something a citizen could do. It would be part of the procedure you're talking about. True, that'd be awesome. So what are you looking for from us for this? Um, well, just we a decision to, to approve. Yeah, we need a decision to approve these. So that has to be you. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty significant piece of infrastructure to have them put in on the, without much expense. You know, we do have the maintenance, but I think that, you know, with, with the last couple of uh, seasons where the flooding activity and the motivation within the community for people to look for ways to contribute, um, I think it'd be uh, beneficial, like I guess maybe for uh, the road commissioner and maybe the emergency management to come up with a uh, a hit list of, uh, of critical infrastructure uh, that needs to be uh, checked, um, and and just to maybe formalize who's who's going to monitor and log these things. And you know, Curtis Dam is going to be on one of those, and and these infrastructure elements are going to be on one of those. Uh, uh, so that it's not something that the that the road crew necessarily needs to yeah. to put on their list. Um, you could create a volunteer position, yeah. inspector of whatever it is, yeah. um, <laughs> and add it to the list. I bet you, yeah. you know, we could find somebody who'd do that. Yeah. We got rid of the wear of coal, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the wear of muck, yeah. <laughs> monitor of muck, monitor of muck. You see, there's only one signature line, so maybe the thing just to authorize just, me. Yeah. Okay, uh, so with that, does anybody else have any other questions or concerns? Are we comfortable approving? Yes. Uh, so I had to entertain a motion to authorize me to sign the uh, maintenance agreement uh, with the CBR PC. Yeah, there's four of them. Right? All four. All four, four of them. Four of them. Uh, uh, four They're all of these the same. Storm, storm water infrastructure uh, elements. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. All right, great. Uh, then I'll sign those. Thank you, Cardi. Sure. Yeah, thank you. Uh, discussion of removing road gravel. So we don't need to you know, nail this down tonight, but I did want to sort of introduce you to this idea that we've been getting, I think, more um, request to remove gravel from yards, from lawns, recently. And I know it's come up several times at, um, in my months here, and um, it's a challenge. Just to make you aware of this it, challenge, we don't really have specialized equipment for doing that. And sometimes it's a relatively small amount, sometimes it's a pretty significant amount of gravel. And so it's, um, I mean, so far I, I don't think I've said yes to any. And so, you know, other than ones I've done myself, okay. um, but but it, you know they're small enough to do that. But um, it's I, I guess I'm wondering if you know is that an appropriate use of road crew time? Um, to, and and, I, and again, I, I'm kind of I'm not sure even what equipment to use if you have a significant amount. It's not like we can reuse that material in most cases. So I guess I'm just. Introducing you to this problem, you might not have been aware of. Okay. One, one of the things. So if gravel is from the road, yes. somehow the road crew or the driving or what. Car
causes the oh, gravel from to... from uh, storms yeah. erosion. Right. Okay, the storms. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean I see it driving around. There's yeah. a few spots, you know, on the road to Adnan from County Road there. Yeah, it's way down in the woods, and yeah, you see it all. Yeah. pretty frequently, and I can see if it's. There's still something in 2023 that's very yeah. visible. Yeah, it's an interesting. So the, what you know stood out to me uh, in this particular topic is that um, we've got a, a very wide range of, uh, of incidences. You know, there's a spectrum of, uh, of issues. So you have something like uh, Elmsley Road, where you've got a huge volume of, uh, of material um, and that uh, that is a pretty big burden for uh, for any property owner uh, to have to absorb, uh, and then you had what happened last year um, over on Worcester Road, um, uh, where a large volume of material is moving across uh, a resident's uh, yard. And so, you know, I think my personal opinion on the matter is that that's that's town infrastructure, and we're property owners who. Uh, to have a certain responsibility to try to reclaim or make a good effort to reclaim uh, some of that material, whether or not we put it back into use uh, is, is a huge question that probably can't be. But, um, but I don't think we could probably set a policy for, uh, for whether we do or we don't every single time. There's a request depending on the scale. And so I think one of the things that maybe we could consider doing is, uh, is tracking the requests um, and noting the Noting the areas, um, for one, to make sure that we're documenting where there may be recurring perennial issues of road erosion that may need a, a, a better construction standard to, to avoid those types of erosions from continuing to happen, but, but also so that we can probably set, a, set an idea of like what the scale of the, the problem is uh, relative to the requests and, and how that could potentially inform uh, a a policy of some sort. You know, I don't I don't want to spin up a policy without having better information about it uh, and, and knowing the scale. But I'm also that's that's just my single position. Just so. thinking out loud, I'm just wondering what other doors that opens. Right. You know, when right. you raise the road, I have to bring in a load of gravel so I can get down to my driveway. And that happens, we have to do that every couple of years because they keep raising the road. Do you want to pay for that? Um, I mean, I, I'm not sure where it stops. I think we take some careful thought yeah. as to what, what, what actually we're doing when yeah. we start yeah. doing that sort of thing. That's, that's my concern. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think while it, while it came up, there was some question about culverts as well. Right. Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, that, that's a little less gray for me because Anybody who has a curb cut with a uh, with the culvert, they they own that culvert and the responsibility for maintaining it, et cetera, et cetera. But but we have kind of a habit of uh, of, of performing some of that maintenance or clearing out, and and that's a bit of a gray area. Or you know we have other town owned culverts that are adjacent to uh, to other uh, to other culverts um, that uh, aren't town owned, and and so there's. I think there's kind of a there's a long list of these storm water perennial maintenance issues that are going to become more frequent and and more problematic. Yeah. Um, so at the very least, I think we need to probably start tracking the requests as they're coming in, um, so that we can get a better idea of where where they're happening and what the causes are, or at least do some analysis about what the root causes are. Mm -hmm. uh, I would add water bars to that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, because as we grade the roads more frequently, those water bars and the materials associated with them um, tend to pile up too. So what, and that's now all silty material that will end up running running down to the property property owners' land. I think I counted six or seven months those bars from the top of my hill all the way down by his property down by Ron, Ron Thompson. You know just. Going into the door, yet. no reason, you know, it's just. And I have a lot of gravel going into the big field down there, across my garage. Should have, I don't mind it. I just go over the track and scoop it up and put it where I want it. Dryer. Free gravel. And we didn't charge it though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you tagged me all right. <laughs> Well, I appreciate that not being a concern for you. Yeah. I can imagine that there are others who are less well equipped. I want to know yeah. who 
<laughs> took the end of the road off up on Lightning Ridge. I'm not aware of any. Uh, I don't know about You come out Tucker Road. Yeah. Yeah. And you join Lightning Ridge. Somebody took it off that corner. It so, wasn't me. Well, I, mean, <laughs> I know you ain't gonna do it. <laughs> but you come right around the corner and you don't even have to stop now. You could come from Tucker Road to Lightning Ridge Road and down the other way. And I think maybe uh, Seth Grinder might have done it. That's what I'm thinking. Because he comes around there with his big trucks and puts manure and draws hay. And the trucks are hard to turn on that corner. You see what I'm saying to you? Mm -hmm. And I, I've been blaming it on the town, but I'm. I, I don't, I'm, I, I think maybe you brought this up in the last meeting, mm -hmm. and I, I'm not aware of uh, that particular issue, but we, I, we can send somebody out to take a look at it um, to see what. What, what we really ought to take a look at, you got to talk about the damn Dan. We want to talk about right in front of his house. They come over that hill, 90 miles an hour, and they hit that hill in the spring of the year. And Jesus, you'll see a guy just like that up this way. Sometimes they're airborne, right? Yep. Huh? Yep. You're going to speak up, or you're going to get anything around. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And you got kids around running around there, and, and they can't even mow the damn lawn. They, got, they, they run everything but onto this road. I want to tip it towards the old road. Great. Talk to you about that, right? Grade it towards that old ditch. All goes there, not to the houses. Not to Ron Thompson's, not to his house, not the other house. I don't know who lives there. Not by taxes out. You know? We can try to put that on the list, but there are standards for constructing the roads with crowns. I don't know that we can just tip them one way or well, the other. I'm telling you, they asked me what happened there, and I'm telling you what happened. My grandfather and Albert George and all the old farmers around there couldn't make, they call it Martin Road. It used to be Martin Road, but somebody changed it. Yeah. And you see it on the right hand side. Yeah. Yep, they couldn't come up through there with team of horses. So they all got together and they took a stone boat. God, they didn't have bucket loaders either. They loaded it on the stone boat and drove down there and they tipped it over. Well, I think the water was running right through all those flat rocks and stuff. You know what I'm saying to you? Yeah. Not gravel not just that's what's going on in Hidoya but you know what that coming down that knoll you know because I've seen you go by and they uh, it's a hump in the road right there in the spring of the air frost and man you come out the other side and you're going by his house and soon they hit the another one you're airborne all right well I'm, I'm hearing that we're, we've got a section of road to take a look at I'm sorry what, what is your name Abi. Jordan, so good to meet you. <laughs> Were you primarily uh, wanting to speak to the uh, to the road speed uh, issue? Uh, both the condition and the and speed. The condition. Yeah. Um, so were there specific uh, conditions of the road that you wanted to, to kind of bring up and register? Uh, there was a bunch of erosion, some 780. Uh, yeah. When that hill starts going up, that road kind of know where it went it went mostly into my yard and when they filled it up that's gonna be the same thing that's gonna happen yeah after a couple more rains so are you in the left going down yeah on the left hand side going down there yeah okay he's got a lot of them I mean things in front of his garage so a lot of them right? oh yeah so our driveway has been washed off because of this too yeah I got uh, that done too in my garage so uh, it'd probably be worth uh, taking a look at the uh, at the grading uh, of the road in, yeah. in that particular area, so that we might want to consider doing something to catch or divert the water, so that it's not going into the uh, into the yard uh, for one. Going into my field right there before I get to his yard, isn't it? Yep. Uh huh? Yeah, we can't even go in there with tractors or anything. We're stuck. I pulled Seth Gardner around there. It's five of them running right into that corner. No, it's seed we have to throw away or do work with. You know, I'm what the hell. I will say this, like I just anecdotally, uh, measure the spring underneath that road. Because every, spr every spring, um, mm -hmm. it's a problem. My car, I have a Corolla. And I go really slow down that hill because I got two wheel drive. 
and I was slowing him down real slow. And all I thought of was the thief's house, and I almost made it. And all of a sudden, it, I, it just dropped, and it goes bang. You know, and that seriously, it wasn't that fast. Yeah. And I, and I put it in shut right. So I enjoyed it for a couple months, and they tried to change the latch. Turned out it was a that bang bent my radiator support. So now it's in. I get the Demir's auto repair. I said, I got collision, but it's going to cost about 2500 bucks to fix. Mm -hmm. But that really could be, that area is always a problem, even in the spring. And it, I think the think the under base of it is just bad. Because it's always about fuel size. Yeah. So it is. All right. I just want you to note that Craig said something in the chat line. Uh, I did not see that. I uh, must be referring to the gravel. He was, yeah. Can you read it? I, I can't see it. For uh, I had seen it in a medium sized tractor with a bucket loader and a York rake uh, would work for removing the gravel. Oh, oh that's on someone's more. Okay. Uh, so I think it was just a comment towards it, you know, material removal from folks uh, yeah. yards, which, you know, I don't don't disagree with that assessment at all, but um, that we kind of need to keep track of how we're, uh, uh, how we're employing the, the use of that and when and, and, and take that into consideration and what, what are we doing with the material. Um, but I do think that we need to take a, a closer look at uh, at the segment of Lightning Ridge then uh, to consider, I mean, this is this is in part why I think it's important that we start tracking, you know, when, when we're having instances of, of material entering, ending up on, on personal property and getting a sense of what the scale is and then Working on what the what the fixes are going to be. Uh, you know, the road bed is like. We've got to hire somebody to do it, and I said, "Hell with that." So I talked to him today. Let the town do it. Well, I can't make that decision without having without having better information and knowing what the scale of the problem is. Because, Mine's pretty good. So, uh, do do we need to discuss that any any further? Uh, no. I just wanted to say something. I've lived on Lightning Ridge for 39 years, and Mike Garen, who was there since the 1970s, he always said that right on that section, very close to your house, there's springs in the road, and there are different times of the year when you can just go up the road and it's okay, it's nicely graded, but starting right there, you'll see wet streaks that go down. So those springs that are in the road lead to this water problem that's going out onto Doug's Field. We've had so much rain and out onto your lawn, and then in the spring, all heck breaks loose, and they you get the clay boils. And but it's a deeper problem, like you said. There's probably some big rocks in there. But I've lived there 39 years, and it's every year. It's every year we get those big. Mm -hmm. But there's a big <laughs> water problem. Yeah. yeah, there's a big water problem. I mean, I, I I don't disagree. Uh, yeah. you know, I, I'm just my, giving you a little you my know, yeah. knowledge of civil infrastructure is. Mm -hmm. Probably better than most, but limited uh, by by uh, any stretch of the imagination. So, uh, you know, to me, they're they're kind of somewhat two separate problems. You know, I think we, we need a, a better a better kind of accounting of where these perennial problem areas are, and that's where we're going to have to have somebody come out to do a, a more specific design for how to repair these segments of roads, and we need to have a budget for for doing it. Um, we, we can't afford to just continue to throw material on top of things that are problem areas that are going to suck up the material. That's what we're doing well, now. But, well, I, I know, and, and some of that is out of, uh, out of necessity for sure. We need to make sure that the roads are passable, but, um, but we also need to have a budget and a plan for what segments of road get a more comprehensive fix. I mean, we, Toby, I'll stop um, talking. So we do um, locate repeat areas throughout the year, usually with drainage problems and clay boils, because clay boils come back every year, and that's because there's moisture in the road and there's clay in the base. So what we do is what's known as a box cut, where we essentially take a point and dig down four feet, remove all the material to whatever length it needs to be done to the other end of the box, and then actually rebuild the structure of the road. We've done that before. We did it on Moscow Woods Road. Um, I've gotten grants for those kind of things. We've done it on the Worcester Road. We did it on the Worcester Road, and there's never been a, a, a problem with mud season ever since we did it almost 10 years ago. Um, so it, essentially, it's something we can do. And if we have to um, look at that section to rebuild it, we can certainly do it. And it would be part of the town budget. Um, 
it's just Roku work and it would be a project that they would have to do under the, the regular budget. Yeah. <clears throat> if it's on a class two road, I don't know if Lightning Ridge is class two or not. Um, there are grants available in class two, so if, since it's not class two, it would have to be done by the town. There'd be no grant, fun, grant monies for it. There's another, there's another message. That's all I want to say. Oh, yeah. Oh. Thanks, thanks, <laughs> Craig said thanks for uh, yeah. noticing. <laughs> so we're coming up on, on budget season, and, and I guess as part of the road, road crew uh, or the highway department budget, it would, it would be good to, I guess, give it a, get an accounting of, of what projects are on the purview for yeah. that, that scope of work, um, both from an hourly perspective and a, and a materials perspective. But yeah, I agree. I, I yeah, the, last, the last thing I wanted to say about you know, the update on the highway department is the list that you were referring to is really, really long. Right yeah. Now. Um, it'll, it'll be a push to get all the grant we need work that we committed to doing this year done, and it needs to be done this month. Um, we've still got FEMA clean up, clean up, and then there are quite a few culverts uh, that need to be replaced and or unclogged um, around town. And um, it's it's really you know we're getting more requests all the time, so it's it's pretty daunting. And then in terms of major projects, we're already committed to the Kent Hill Road right. French mattress project. Um, Toby and I met with uh, residents on Bliss Pond Road for the culvert that washed out in 23 and 24. I mean, clearly something needs to be done there. Um, there's the um, Adamant Village and the Haggard Road, that culvert. Um, and then Martin Road would also be near the top of the list. Um, so there, there's a lot. And um, yeah, we should and will consider it in the budgeting, but it's going to be a prioritization exercise to some degree. Oh, well, I hire some of this work yeah. done, maybe? Or? Well, I, I mean, I think that's what uh, that begs the question, and, and, and part of the reason I think that we need a better accounting of what you know what the hours are for these projects is like we really need to have a, a sit down with the <laughs> road crew and have a, uh, a, a kind of a heart to heart on like what what makes sense for the road crew to do and what makes sense to put out to bid, even if they are uh, are more road crew related maintenance issues if, it, if it's a, a certain scope of work uh, per year and we need to budget for putting them out to bid um, you know I, anecdotally I think about the, the the work that was done last uh, last summer and the, seeing how those roads that saw a significant reconstruction responded to to other flood events certainly there were culverts that were kind of repeat offenders but for the most part those roads held up a lot better than than the roads that did not see uh, reconstruction activity. So I think there's plenty of reason for, uh, or rationale for uh, putting a maintenance budget in uh, in the highway department's budget for for hiring out a certain uh, amount of work every year to try to get some of these perennial issues off. And you know, I think Max Gray Road would be you know another one that you know through various mud seasons now that we have several of them. Um, really became uh, a, an issue of passage and safe passage or emergency passage. Um, and we can't really afford to, to kind of work through these slowly. We need all of them fixed. Um, uh, well, and, and we're also down a staff member as right. well on the highway yeah. department. So essentially that limits the, the scope of what is getting done. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I guess the question is, you know, if we hire an outside contractor to do two or three culverts, and that's going to be a five thousand or six thousand dollar, does it have to go out to bid? Is that low enough in the scale where we can just bring a contractor in and say, please do this, and not have to go through a let's wait and see and get three bids because we're not going to get three bids right away. It's one of those things that we need to know what the threshold might be, and I, you know, we can look at what the cost per replacing a culvert or upsizing a culvert is and come to you and say this is you know this is something that we can contract and get done but we need to understand you know what's the what's the threshold and what we can spend to a contractor i think that's just a matter of re revising or re re reviewing the the purchasing policy mm -hmm. um, that's that's pretty easily done um, and then uh, and then setting those thresholds right 
because I think we can find excavate you know excavation companies that will come sure. in who know how to put a culvert in, Definitely. and we can supervise. So if that's if that's your intent, then we'll make a you, you know we can start making a list of um, people to to give us quotes on doing uh, culvert work. I mean, there's over 600 culverts in town, yeah, and probably 60 or 70 of them need attention in some way, shape, or form. Has Carney been dis um, designated as a purchasing agent? If so, he can make purchases of up to five thousand dollars without prior, prior approval, provided they're in the budget. Okay. Great. Yes. Yeah. 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 So I, you know, provided that they're in the budget. So I think that's kind of the big thing. Is that we're going to well, have to start putting that, in, putting those things in there. But in this case, the purchasing would just be for labor because we would have to supply the culvert and material anyway. Correct. Right. Yeah. Right. If we were doing it on our own, yeah. yeah. yeah and between five and twenty-five, you don't need the two bids. It's advisable, but it's not required according to our purchasing policy, unless federal funding comes into play, and then things get a little more sticky. Well, they also have to prior approval of the select board. Yeah. Right. So, so if we, you know, if we get someone who can do three culverts on one road, and it's going to be seventy-five hundred dollars, we'll come to you before he comes and get your permission to go ahead. And if it's just one culvert on a road and it's less than five thousand, we'll you know we'll just keep moving along and get those problems taken care of. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like a plan to me. I can't see how it costs so much. We got the excavator. We come in there, put some signs up, get in there, start digging, put the dirt here, dirt here, put the culvert in, come in with a excavator or whatever, back off, push it back in, and you're home free. I, yeah, I think it's the scale of work, Doug, that is the issue. It's not, uh, it's not the cost. We have a lot of these to do, and we've got clay boils that need to be addressed, and we got. If you can run an escalator, how long is it going to take you to get rid of? I'm not, not, not going to, but Doug, we got to stay on on task. We're covering a lot of ground here. I, I appreciate the input, but we're going to we're going to move. And we're catching up on two years of floods. We're catching up on two years of floods, and frankly, I'm pretty impressed with us. <laughs> with how much work is getting done and how passable the roads are relative to other towns. Um, so uh, with that, uh, thank you for the input. We're going to move on to the, uh, to the fiscal year 2026. May I ask one question about yeah. uh, Cardi's road report? Yeah. Uh, I, having had 20 tires recently dumped on my property, I'm just interested in your last statement there. We do not have the capacity to complete the tire pickup events that we received grant funding for. So remember, Ann Tulin wrote a grant for the uh, Central yeah. Vermont Solid Waste Management District um, to, to host a tire event, a pickup event where people could drop off tires and then yeah. and pay. Her vision was they would pay a certain amount. Um, we, would, we would use that money to see next year's tire event and keep it going in perpetuity. Oh. And that was what we were going to do. Originally, the plan was to do two days um, of tire drop-offs. I, I just don't see how we're going to get that done this fall. Okay. Okay. There would be Saturdays. Right. I think one in August, one in September. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, 2026 budget. Um, Kari, do you have a list of FY 2026 Highway Department uh, priorities? Yeah, well, I think I, I rattled through a number of those. I just wanted to share that um, the concerns beyond that the staffing level, we definitely need to get another full-time person hired if possible. Um, there are you know, constant concerns about equipment, aging equipment. The CV truck is, is definitely one that's been problematic. And then one issue that was surprised me that I wasn't aware of was that there is there are feelings about not receiving a bonus this past year, and I, apparently there was some you know tradition of, of a highway department maybe all town employees receiving a bonus around the holidays, and maybe I know that. Higher. Sorry. I think it was just highway. I've seen no. it. Just highway. No, it was all employees. No. Okay. And um, when I asked about it a little bit more, um, apparently it was part of the um, negotiations for the labor contract that there was um, discussions about potentially having a bonus and it just didn't work its way into the final contract. But just just so you're aware, that is something that lingers. There are feelings about that. 
Um, that's, that's sort of it. I don't think I have anything else to really report. They have the highway park. Um, so I did put a first draft of the budget worksheet in there. All I've really done is plugged in the capital items that we talked about the last time we met. Um, those, those pieces of equipment or bonds that we're already committed to. Um, except for technology, I didn't put that in because we need to have the discussion about moving to the cloud and how that affects uh, purchasing a server in the future. So um, the budget, there's a budget subfolder, I believe. And under my way. Some of the categories I noticed. You took the things that we usually have out separate as separate warnings and you kind of put them in. Oh, that's how the budget is organized. Um, uh huh. It, it's different from how it's organized those are, they're, in here. That's, it is? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. The, because they're worn separately. Because they're worn separately. And, um, um, but you're talking about the um, social service appropriations. And you the know, fire department. Like, like yeah. Yes. So it's a little confusing to me. The intent okay. is to pull them out again, right? <laughs> not, to, not, not to move Anything them. that the town that re the voters are going to vote on as a separate matter um, will be um, will, will be pulled out in that format the, in the okay. in the town report, um, so that that will be clear. But in our budget, um, those all of those items fall under general government, and so that's. The, no, I the, understand that. I just wanted to be sure you weren't intending to not have them voted on separately. Yeah, no, that no, wasn't, I, I wasn't intending to do anything differently. In that okay. Regard, okay. Also, the cemetery kind of gets buried because it's I forget where you put it, but instead of being a separate item and having their own category. Yeah, that's just the formatting of, uh, that's okay. how we have our accounting software set up. Uh -huh. So when you ask it to print next year's budget, it comes out just in the way that's currently formatted. I see. Um, which is the way that I'm reporting to you how we're doing in our budget status reports. There's a, so the, how they're approved is somewhat different from the, mm -hmm. you know, that, that format of the county. So not, not it's just a very early start um, to this budgeting process, but what I would recommend is we discuss, we're going to discuss the calendar, but starting to invite in the committees and the staff members that you want to hear from in terms of what might be different than this next year. And then I can also start filling in some of the gaps in terms of trend, history and trend, and what I know about um, planned, you know, planned changes. So this is basically what you did last year, but you'll have me to help. Were there uh, other specific questions about the uh, about the comparison uh, of, of the budget and the items that uh, are in the spreadsheet? Because then I think we should probably have a conversation about uh, the, the timeline of looking at various committees. I did have one specific question. I noticed you said the Highway Grants Administrator is gone. I, I have to look No, the up. Operations Manager is gone. Okay. It looked to me like you said Toby was quitting at the end no, of the I'm year or something. No, I'm still breathing. I've just been reclassified. Yeah. Been moved to another no, side I'm of the road. I'm it said Highway Grants it, Administrator, but it's... Okay, I just wanted to, I just wondered if something had happened. That's certainly not what I meant. It doesn't mean not what I meant. That's not what I meant. The, the operations manager is, there's a number of positions in the highway department. That, I, no, I understood that. that. Flux. I understood that, but it, anyway. No, you still got me, damn it. <laughs> okay. I didn't get a chance to look at this. This came in after I looked at everything, so. I... You'll see a lot in the coming mm. months. Yeah, it, yeah. I, I mean, I think the, the big part for uh, certainly for me was uh, was getting a sense of uh, where where we're going to see increases in and in servicing of, of debt and expenses, um, right. and then uh, feedback on how we might want to make adjustments to uh, the uh, the capital budget for. Uh, for the road crew relative to what they've expressed their needs are um, in those budgets plus uh, material. I mean, I, I think there's going to be a huge 
huge dialogue around uh, around the highway department relative to these maintenance projects that we know needs to get addressed sooner than later, and we currently likely don't have the funds represented in the material costs uh, in in the last couple of years of budget, and we also don't have any any contractor expense uh, in there. We want to start budgeting and allocating funds for that. I mean, well, but just understand by not having that extra person salary that frees up a lot of funds that's in the budget that it can be diverted to a contractor. It's just not in the line item. Yeah. So if you have one salary that doesn't show up for a whole year, that's a lot of money that you can spend on contractors without changing anything in the bottom line. Yeah. Um, salary and benefits. Yeah, salary and benefits. Kari, the, the gravel, it was 80000 and you spent one forty two. Now, is it, some of that one forty two covered by the FEMA? That doesn't include the FEMA gravel. It doesn't. That, that, that it's was, just a terrible mud. That was separate. Okay, wow. Yeah. We had a, you know, we had that mud season all all winter long. Right. And we were spending tremendous amounts of money. So our budget went down for that, but we should have probably put it up. Yeah, okay. Well, again, um, if you keep having storms that, that are not FEMA storms, uh, we're going to have erosion and going to need more material than normal. And then you're going to have people asking to move the gravel out of their yard. Right. Yeah. It, I think it's very unusual to be purchasing any gravel early in the winter months. The, the quarries actually shut down, but last year they were allowed to maintain, mm -hmm. and we really needed them in December, January. And it, it may be that we want to stockpile some prior to the winter and and just have it on site so that we don't have to run into the situation where we don't have any gravel for yeah. those for those episodes. I mean, I, I think stockpiling like I said, is a huge conversation to be had. I mean, we we have limited space to do it, mm -hmm. um, but there, I don't think there's any question that we would see a price advantage to buying it when. When there isn't as much demand, and uh, and trying to keep it on hand for when we need it, yeah. uh, and may not have access to it, or when access to it would be expensive. Well, um, just the other thing is, prior to the twenty three storm, gravel was twelve dollars a yard, a, a, you know, a cubic yard, and now it's up to seventeen or eighteen dollars a cubic yard. So there was a huge increase because of the demand and the and the supply issue for the storm, and it never went back down. It stayed there, so <clears throat> the budget just had to go up because just because of the price change due to the circumstances we're dealing with now. Uh, probably one of the other things that we might want to uh, take a closer look at, I guess, would be um, the uh, uh, labor contract. Um, I know during. Uh, negotiations, uh, our ability to contract certain uh, work, uh, scopes of work out uh, to contractors uh, can kind of run afoul with the union. It's um, a sensitive issue. It's a pretty sensitive issue. Um, we, uh, it was a good dialogue. It, it didn't end up being too much of a point of contention, but uh, we, we might want to revisit that if, if we want to get a little bit more it's come up. flexible. Um, yeah. Uh, about what we're contracting out or how we how we approve that internally. Yeah, and again, so our inability to have a full staff is is driving the Absolutely. need driving the need and the, the union has to understand that. And I, we, we're doing everything we can to find road crew members and they're not they're everybody is in this every town in this in Vermont is in the same situation. Yeah, and there's got to be flexibility. Absolutely, I, I mean that was that was largely the, the point that was being made um, during during negotiations. Is that it's just the reality. Like if, if we're out advertising and we still can't fill uh, fill the roles uh, that we need to perform the work, uh, we the work still needs to be done. Um, and and they understood, uh, but I, I, my guess is we're still a little short on on having that covered uh, in language. Um, yeah, uh, that's I, a, a side agreement. I don't think we want to make any assumptions. We want to be respectful about it. Yeah, uh, no, absolutely. Um, we, we don't want to fight about it. Yeah, no. Um, so do we want to have a, a short dialogue about uh, timelines relative to uh, Anne's budget timeline that was uh, <laughs> used the last time around? 
Barbara, yeah, Barbara, yeah, do you I, have a I comment? I do have a meantime? request. Um, on the timeline, Kellogg Hubbard is scheduled for November the 11th select board meeting, and the executive director cannot make that date. So he either has requested to be on your October schedule or November 25th select board meeting. You've already contacted these people? <laughs> no, no, he contacted me. Oh. <laughs> Um, so does anybody have questions or concerns about the, about the timeline and running, running with that for, I think I can start there right now. Um, trying to run through that again. I mean, we, we spent a fair amount of time with, uh, with Sandra in the early, uh, early days last year. Um, a lot of that was, uh, from my recollection, uh, uh, as, as much a training about budget and uh, and how budgets affect tax rates um, and how we should expect to move through the budgeting process, which uh, which may not be as as necessary. But I certainly don't want to speak for uh, Bill or uh, or Chris about um, kind of breezing over uh, some of that initial dialogue. Uh, but that's that's kind of what. What the, the subtext is there uh, relative to Sandra's uh, presence? That was the treasurer coming in. And right, and this was a schedule for a select board on which every single person had not done it before. That's right. And now we have the majority has done it before, and I feel like we don't. Uh, for myself personally, I, I feel like I don't want to slow it down, and I will ask questions and. I feel that you three can answer them. <laughs> Plus, Cardi. Cardi's here at all the meetings. Yeah, and Car and, 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 and you didn't have Cardi. We didn't have Cardi. We had right. Cardi is the new Sandra. I joined in November. So right. Okay. So that was already underway. And so that will yeah. also make things yeah more professional. Yeah, it's also well. It's also grounded us a little more in our budget and our tracking throughout the year, which right. before we didn't have a lot of uh, a lot of sight in, uh, largely because of experience uh, or lack thereof. Um, but you know, now having gone through it, I can speak for myself. It's it's largely looking at the budget from years prior um, and, and getting a, a good idea of what's driving the costs in each one of those, mm -hmm. uh, which. Certainly, I have a much better, uh, better sense of. So, you know, I think that there's, uh, there's good reason, I guess, to start uh, meeting with individual committees mm -hmm. or getting feedback from, uh, from uh, departments in particular uh, mm -hmm. about what, what they see um, prices or, or costs being driven by um, and, and starting to get some early input on where we might be increases. <laughs> My assumption is that this is going to be a very difficult year of uh, weighing, uh, wearing, weighing where we may continue to need to make cuts or, uh, or, or think about how we're appropriating things relative to priorities. Mm -hmm. um, so is that a fair characterization? Um, so I think the sooner that we can kind of get get input from uh, various departments on on what will be driving costs in those areas, the, the more we can work through the, that dialogue. Um, are there any, it's hard to imagine that there are any that are too soon to meet with? Yeah, I mean, personally, I'm really curious to hear from the fire departments, because that's such a large number, but I don't think they'll be ready. They won't, right. they won't be ready. Neither, the, I mean, there are lots that won't be able to give us anything till December. The police won't. Um, right. So, uh, so if we start with our own committees, right. with our, our own committees. committees. Yeah. And you need to give them time to meet and think about it. Some of them, well, uh, as I recall, I broke them out. Some of them, it's pretty simple. It's, right. And those were the ones we put on first, like the listers. Mm -hmm. They could probably have a quick meeting and tell us what they want and so on. The zoning administrator, um, the committees need a little more time to have a meeting and talk about what they want. 
Well, and the other big kind of structural changes that uh, the last time we went through it, uh, we were kind of giving each other, uh, which took assignments uh, to uh, converse with any of these, uh, as I guess to act as like budget liaisons, but I think that was also largely a, uh, an educational exercise. And I, I don't know that we necessarily need to do that this time if we uh, can uh, just have uh, a schedule since we're going to start it early if we can just schedule them to come in um, and have uh, a conversation with us uh, about what they expect uh, their uh, their costs or re requests to be that we we don't necessarily need uh, liaisons for each of the individual budget items is mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. is that a fair does anybody feel differently about that do you want any personal homework, Bill? For, <laughs> I certainly can't handle personal homework at this point, so. Uh, I think also part of the issue was uh, our only staff was Barbara. And right. We didn't want to make Barbara do all this work, so we took on bunches of it. So right. Now we have a little more help, I think. And we've done it before, so yeah. I think staff can okay. handle most of the contact information. Sure. Need something done with me. So here we should start inviting in. I think we should start inviting in, uh, and, and probably start early with um, with maybe some of the quote unquote easier ones. I guess the ones that will have a better view on on what their requests could be um, now. <laughs> I guess probably uh you invite them now for say October. Yeah. I think so. Okay. Yeah, it's it's hard to imagine trying to start it in, by the next meeting, but uh by October I think we should we should probably be able to get you know, well, most of them meet once a month anyway. So right. a lot of them won't meet again until right. Until after this year. Yeah, right. yeah but I think we could have some people come in at the next meeting. Um there's a list there right now I'm not finding it. But the listers, for example, and the zoning administrator. Um, what is that? You list? have the cemetery commission, DRB. DRB on that list. Right? In the very early list, is swim committee. Yeah, I will. Uh, it does say town clerk. I don't know, but um, you could probably do a budget pretty quickly, right? In two weeks, yeah. Yeah. So there are some that we could handle next week, just to knock some of them off. I think. And they can tell us if they can't do it by now. So how many how many do we think that we could probably cover in a meeting? Um, that's my first question. And well, this is how we did it last year. On right. October 9th, we had the town clerk, the listers, the zoning administrator, the DRB, the swim committee, and the sanitary commission. And I believe they, they all came in. And they all had some things. I think the Secretary Commission wasn't ready. They, she, she came, but then she wasn't yeah, ready. It took yeah, a while. She she to get that okay. Way. Okay. And we could call some of the others and ask them if they're having a meeting and could present a budget, and they can tell us yes or no. It would also depend on how much else you all have on your agenda that day. Well, so I'm wondering if we we tentatively uh, target like three or four slots for every agenda, um, and then uh, Barbara, if you have the bandwidth to maybe contact each of these folks in the next like week, basically to say, you know, how soon do you think that you'd be okay. able to, and anybody who maybe feels like they could potentially work into the next meeting. Um, uh, we'll we'll try to get two yeah. or three maybe into the next meeting, but uh, but then try to in earnest get. Folks and so at the moment, work. you're just talking about our own municipal boards. Own ministry, yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah, Please. we do that this week. So the the way I built this last year was I worked backwards, and maybe you just want to do that for a minute. Um, and if you see, we're going to have one more meeting in September, two in October, and we kind of want to be having all this input by November because then we're going to have to start massaging it, and that takes several meetings. Right. And we're not going to be able to do it at Christmas, so it would be good to work toward finalizing it before Christmas. And the Monday, November 25th, just is the week of Thanksgiving, so I just want to be sure you guys are all going to plan on having a meeting that night. Okay. 
So it, it, just thinking about it that way, it would be good to knock out a whole bunch at the next meeting if we possibly can. And, you know, keep plugging on. Can I ask do you, do you want to hear from committees that don't request any changes and just want the status quo? Don't need to. Although one of the things I liked about what we did last time was it gave us a chance to have a conversation about what they were doing, what their priorities are. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Yeah, and I, I also remember uh, not finalizing until after we were toward the end of January, beginning right. of February. That is what happened. We aimed for yeah. December 11th. Yeah. But then the police, uh, you know, changed yeah. their budget at the last minute. The county was really late. Right? Yeah. Yeah, they were all late, so it turned out we had to wait until January. But even aiming to have it done before Christmas, we still were scrambling in January. Yeah. As I recall. We had an extra meeting. Yeah. The, the hard decisions I feel like were made in December. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't give out my cell number, so if it rings, it's junk. <laughs> so you just hit the button. Okay. So we'll we'll start working on and this. And why don't I move Colin Hubbard up to up to October since more people like to go later sure. and he offered October. Sure. Okay, I'll, I'll so tell September him. September 23rd is available too. Okay. Yeah. September yeah. 23rd is available. You'll be first. <laughs> um, on top of Barbara's comment, I think I just saw we have a full week in November off the school district. Mm -hmm. So that might affect who's in town on the 25th if school is out that whole week. I might not be here. I might have to zoom in personally. Gotcha. Okay. All right, well, that sounds like a rough plan. Uh, I think for the next couple of meetings, at least, we'll start to get some input on maybe when folks will feel prepared to uh, meet. I, I, I'm lukewarm, I think, on trying to front load it. I just, I feel like that makes us, uh, that really locks us into pretty long meetings uh, in the near future. And then that's Do it now or long in January. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, that is fair. <laughs> um, so that that's that's fine with me. So we'll, we'll try to knock as many off as we can as they feel prepared, um, and count on seeing a representative from each each one of them if if they can, uh, just to check in with them to see what what they've been up to this year and, and maybe what they see for needs in the in the year to come. Um, I guess I would maybe put it on their uh, on their radar that maybe we might need to meet with folks more than once if we need to get creative about cuts. I mean, yes, no. I think some of the bigger or some of the bigger ticket items that we're going to be looking at later uh, in the process are going to be you know highway uh, bar department budgets and. Uh, and emergency services, um, and those are going to be somewhat inflexible negotiations uh, around what, what we need. So if we are in a position where we're having to anticipate cuts, we're going to be revisiting things that we see early in the process and, uh, and circling back on some of those conversations after, uh, after some of those more Substantial uh, inputs are coming in later in the process, so we may we may need to call folks back in as we as we weigh those. Yeah, or get feedback. I, I, I would suggest that you know, we're not going to recommend their proposal, and we'll let them know that. And then right. Invite them to come back and hear we don't want to. But. Well, that's what we did. Once we had everything on the table, we decided what our priorities were, right. and then we made cuts accordingly. And I remember calling all those people, calling the chair of the Conservation Commission and explaining, here's what we've done and here's why. Yep. And they were pretty accepting. Mm -hmm. Without coming in for a meeting. That's right. I just called them yeah. and told them personally and they reported to their... Yeah. Do you want this invitation for, to start lining up these appointments with the select board to be bring your wish list, but then also bring 
a realistic <laughs> That's budget. what we discussed last year. What is your bare bones must have budget? And then if you could sort of rank going up, that's what we discussed so that we wouldn't have to worry too much about calling people back and saying, oh, well, which one do you want? If we cut this thing, is that more? I would say given the tenor of the <laughs> dialogue around budgets in the last year to two years, it, it would be hard to even consider wish lists. Uh, and so I would hope that they would be coming in with what their what their what they feel their bare bones are. Um, but you know, I, I guess yeah. I, does anybody disagree? I, I think it's more just sometimes I was surprised by what people found necessary and what they found wish listy, and I didn't think it wasn't always what I assumed they would have found. So sometimes it's nice to have their perspective on that. I mean that that that's fair. I, I think something I've been kind of ruminating, ruminating on would be like if, if there are wish list type things, what are um, what are maybe some mechanisms or ways that we feel like uh, the town could support them having those uh, those things supported through fundraising or or other initiatives? You know, are are there community members uh, in 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 the town that, uh, that could help support those I things? Or just, you said grant the writing. I mean, yeah. Uh, but in terms of what to communicate, I would suggest setting the tone by saying we anticipate this could be yeah very challenging. Yeah. Yeah. If you are going to be proposing something, a, signi a significant increase, be prepared to defend it. Tell us what the return right. on investment is. Yeah. But perhaps we could also ask for their wish list and then help guide them because you guys have a group that groups can start doing fundraising on their own. So that could be a conversation that we could have with them when they come in. But then also, maybe if we track this year after year, if we see that this particular item has been on the conservation wish list for four years now. Yeah. Maybe in a year or five, we really want to give it serious consideration. So I, I like the idea of asking for their bare bones. What do you really need for this next fiscal year? What's your wish list? And, man and then manage their expectations from there. Okay. Barbara, do you have a call list then? I do. Right. So I just want to try to understand. For me, it's right now, it's just our own board committees and commissions and Kellogg Cover. No other external other than Kellogg Cover because he's reached out to me. Great. Yeah, okay. that's correct. Okay, thanks. Any other uh, conversation about budgets or timelines? Oh, you know, there's one thing we have to remember, um, which is the. Um, all the social services things. The town has asked us to appoint a committee to do I that. Know. Okay, so we. Yes, they didn't ask this past year. Well, no, but they asked us two years ago and we didn't do it. So I think we better do it. I know you like to do it, Barbara, but I do think the town wants us to do it. If I the town, we're talking about the voters? Yeah, the two meeting. years ago at town meeting, it was they requested that we. Um, and, and it was brought up at town meeting again. Somebody said, hey, why didn't you do it? We asked you to do it. So I, I feel that we're committed, that we have to do this. You can be on the committee. So <laughs> you should be on the committee, okay. actually. Yeah. Um, in the past, it's been, um, I don't know, it's usually a select board member and then a few community members. Right, I was so, on it for a number of years. Were you? Way back. Okay. I need more context. So there used to be a committee, you're saying? Right. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. basically all the social service agencies put in their request, and right. we used to have a committee that would meet yeah. just two or three times, yeah. uh, maybe well, just the, once. This, I mean, the, the deadline for submission is December 1st, so right. you, there's not a whole lot of time to meet two or three times during right. of December. And how are you going to form this committee? Are we yeah. going to reach out and invite people? Are we get, it's going to be an open call on front porch forum? How are we looking to recruit? What is the mission? Are you going to vet these proposals? Or are you going to call yeah, for more? No, what yeah. I was sort of to make the recommendation to the select board on what ends up in the warning. And most of the time, it was what came in. But occasionally, there'd be a time where one There's agency a has a triple their budget. And that committee sort of evaluates before making a recommendation to the select board. 
And then you can answer if it comes up at town meeting and they don't have a representative present, why did this happen? Right. So how about one select board member, a staff member, and, and, and a resident? Just quick. I, I don't remember the makeup of the former committees, do you, Jim? I don't either. They were... They, 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 they haven't met since I started working here. Oh. There, 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 there was one one year, the chair screwed everything up and it ended up being a fiasco. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we never went back. <laughs> there was a lot of, yeah. I think smaller I, might be better in this. It's like, I think three right. is probably fine because it's more information gathering than decision making. Right. Well, last year's proposals were almost identical to the year before. Right. Yeah. They, they, and the year before that, they were almost identical. The big change was Old West Church because it was their 200th or 250th yeah. anniversary. And everything else was like, Almost spot on. So I remember Gus was on it when I was on. He may remember what the makeup of the committee yeah. was. Yeah. And they mostly wanted to know how many people are served. Are there any um, people from Callis on their boards? Have they asked other area towns, or are we just being singled out because they know Callis is? So the, the, the problem is own. that the the application has been already on the website, people have already submitted, and we didn't ask all those questions. Mm -hmm. We have to go back to them yeah. with a revised application now. Would you like me to ask Gus to, to, to tell me how they used to do it? I mean, I think, we, yeah, I think at the very least, we're gonna need like a, a kind of a, a proposal for the number, the makeup, and what the committee is gonna be. Um, yeah. And then, so that that's gonna form a charge that we'll be able to, make a decision about, and then uh, if, if we form it this year, then uh, the extent of what they're going to be able to consider are the applications for this year um, without probably asking too many other follow-up questions. Um, but it would be a good, I guess, dry run at, um, at presenting that list as a body um, or a recommendation um, relative to what those requests are. Mm -hmm. Um, do you, do you think you can have one for next meeting yeah. for us to try uh, to form? Yeah. Okay. Then we'll come back with something next meeting. Can it be as few as three? For I don't know. I think the idea was to have a bit of more community involvement. Let me ask us about that, but I'm guessing that whoever it is that brought it up at the last town meeting wants to be on the committee. I don't remember <laughs> who it was. It may have been Matt Gardner Morse. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Or it could have been Barry Bernstein or Craig Lyme. Those are the three people that come to my mind. And I think, I think it was Matt Gardner Morse. They come go to work. <laughs> Um, so uh, let's leave it at that uh, and we're running uh, a little behind uh, schedule and so I was thinking yeah. that maybe we uh, do the historic marker uh, oh, uh, sure. agenda item uh, just be kind of sensitive to the time uh, for folks who are here and then uh, we'll circle back on the East Montpelier. Sounds good. Uh, so we've got a proposal for uh, a roadside historic marker. Uh, do you want to Tell us a little bit about what you've what you've got proposed. Yeah. So I'm um, my name is Colton Teller. I live here in Dallas. I'm a junior at U32, and um, I'm a member of the Vermont Civil War Hemlocks, which is a living history group here in Vermont. And um, just recently, I was appointed to the American Battlefield Trust Youth Leadership Team, and um, they're a nonprofit in Washington D.C. that goes around preserving uh, battlefields of the United States, our hallowed ground, and. Um, I'm one of 10 high school students from across the country, and I got appointed to represent the state of Vermont. And um, as a part of the program, I had to come up with a um, visitation education or, um, what's the other one? Visitation education or um, inspiration project, basically. And um, I reached out to the Vermont Division for Historic Preservation to get some ideas and I, I realized that the hall, the, the Memorial Hall, which it was um, originally named at, for uh, the Stowe family, Stowe Post 29, which was in memory of this, um, William Stowe, who was the first soldier from Callis to enlist and he was killed at the Battle of the Wilderness in 1864. And um, I realized that the hall didn't have a marker and it's the last wooden 
GAR Hall in, in Vermont. And so I, fi I thought it would be fitting to get one there eventually. And um, I've been working with both the Division for Historic Preservation and the Hall on some on authoring the sign. And the, states, the state will actually pay for the sign after eight months, so no cost to the town or anything. And, um, but I just had, just yesterday, the Division for Historic Preservation and the Hall approved what, I had, what we had written together. So I believe it's the one that on the agenda has changed, but that's about pretty much it. So. Cool, so the, the application for the marker was uh, was accepted by uh, Historic Preservation, and then, yeah. uh, and then uh, you said it was eight months, they, they ended It'll up take eight months to get a sign. Yeah, to get it um, all put together and installed. But we still haven't, I still have to do a little bit of work to find, with the hall and the Historic Preservation Trust to find uh, an exact location of where we're going to put it. Bill, I know Mary told me you're, you're on the association. I don't know if you had any ideas about. Um, you said the proposed text was edited 813. You said it's changed after that, or this is this is the final? The, the one I had sent has changed in the last couple of days. And so this, we're not looking at the final here? No. Okay. I just I just barely sent it to Kari and Tegan. And, okay. And then they want to when you say the state will pay for it, mm -hmm. will they pay for the actual sign, the materials, and making it, and installation? Correct. So there's no cost to no the town cost at all. No cost to the town at all. Thank you. I and imagine we would have the uh, the road crew uh, install. Oh, I'm guessing that. Yeah. Laura hasn't directly told me about that yet. But um, and then once we once once it is possibly installed, I was. Um, the Hemlocks, we do a lot of events like dedications and parades and, so, and such. And uh, I was hoping to do a dedication ceremony if approved with the Hemlocks and the um, Sons of Union veterans as well as the Hall. So. We don't own the Hall, do we? Well, it's, uh, I guess that's my next question. Mm -hmm. It's a little unique in that it's not a town, uh, yeah, it's not so a town facility, yeah. and it's on a class four road. so. Uh, I don't know what scope we have yeah. for uh, for approving the placement of it. It might need some approval from the, uh, or at least the placement of it, if it's going to be placed on uh, the property of the hall. Yeah, we don't. Do they want it out by the, by the road? Yeah. Where, where they, it goes in? I, or is it by, by the hall? That's so what, what I was saw your that. thought? That's what I saw. I mean, for me, it, as a visual standpoint, it'd be best near the hall, but I don't really know mm -hmm. okay. where. Oh, the state needs to come up with two signs. It needs to have a turn <laughs> your sign. Yeah. 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 a real sign that's in front of the building, I mm -hmm. think. It's, uh, well, I always thought, they, not to get too far in the weeds here, but you know, the sign that says Gar Road, it should be G period, A period, R period. Yeah. And it should say right under it what that means. Exactly. Grand Army of the Republic, not yeah. because it's not Gar Road, it's G A R Road. Yeah. And Thank you, Bill. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's, an issue, that's an issue for me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but um, I, I'm uh, missing a meeting tomorrow night with Memorial Hall, so they're probably going to talk about this. So um, I don't. It doesn't bother me. Either, so it's like I, it, I mean, if it's an architectural thing. We have, probably want to figure out where it's going to go yeah, exactly. by the hall, but uh, it's a nice to have. Yeah, thank you. No, I think it's great. Thanks for mm -hmm. uh, making this a project and, and adding to the community. It's, it's a cool thing to recognize. I attended an event, and had similar questions. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think the more more of this information that can be uh, documented in a, in a fixed way uh, for the public is, is awesome. Um, so I, I guess, can we entertain, I guess, like conditional approval of some sort? Um, uh, the application is already in. It already uh, has or just been general. approved. There, so there is a, general support. There is a form I need to select for to sign. Oh, that's um, What does it say? What are we saying? It's just, it's just. Are we approving the wording or? Yeah, just the word. 
Okay. So, uh, is, is that, I think all this is in your select board folder, isn't it? But he said the wording was oh, changed. Right. 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 And the, yeah. What's the timeline? Do you need them to sign? Um, as soon as possible would be great. So we can, uh, they can start building the sign, putting the sign together, because it'll take eight months to put, be put together. Okay, so do you have the the current wording, the final wording? Yeah, I have the wording right here on, on my cell phone. Is it possible? Or, or maybe you could tell us what I, the changes oh, you were. You if, if they, you were they were very, I sent it to Tegan and Kari, but. If Kari, maybe you could put it up on the screen for everybody to see. Or just forward it to. That's true. Sorry, I'll have our computers go uh, <laughs> Although they, they, they don't. Right. It was all very last minute, like they were just last minute tweaks. It wasn't very substantial. Okay, so small but is this the final or this, might there be other tweaks? This was the final unless okay. you, unless the board had any tweaks. So did you send it to me or do I, I replied to an email. I can send just, it. Just now? Yeah, just a little bit ago. Oh, okay. Okay. I got a yeah, I should be able to text to Mary Jacobson. You've been in, you've been talking to her a yeah. little bit too. And she said there was a there was a new version. Can you see it? So this is the new one? Yeah, this is what he just this said. This is the, and I'm sorry, who did you say made the changes or asked for um, It was both Mary and the um, and Laura, who's the um, Department Department of uh, Historic Preservation Got it. Okay, um, thank you. D officer Division. And by Mary, you mean Mary Jacobson? Yeah. Okay. I see they added the periods. <laughs> Everybody ready for me to scroll? Mm -hmm. And there's two sides to it. So. Frame is hyphenated. Mm, I'll look it up. <laughs> <laughs> it might not be, generally. I do get the wood space green, but I don't know. Again. Very good. Yeah, no, that's a nice, nice sign. So wood frame house, I see it both ways. What um? It's it's used both ways. What is the sign made out of? Is it like a bronze thing? It's painted, or how is that? It's, uh, I don't know it's the exact way they're made, but it's like the, it's the green ones that are okay. all around. What well, the I'm the guessing cast. stainless steel I cast. Yeah, okay. yeah I, I think it's yeah. believe I believe yeah. it has. Yeah, I've seen that one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Fitch and North Park Pillar. Oh, the one at the oh, Kent, so like Kent that, Museum, too. The museum as well. One at the Kent Museum yeah. also. Yeah. That's what, okay. The historical markers. Yeah. Nice. And what you've written here will fit without wearing glasses? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, it said, there, there's two sides it's to two it. two-sided, right? yeah. 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 Do, you, do you need all five select board members or just one appointed select board member to sign? And do you I don't have, have a printed form, I forgot. But if we offer oh, we one can, person to sign, yeah, just, then I can print it. Yeah. Can send it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. And and do we still need to condition it uh, on the uh, you know the approval of the placement on uh, you know right. with the approval of property owner association or property owner? Yeah, I think we can say he's oh, okay to go ahead and have to sign. Yeah. Maybe yeah. we can later figure out where it's going to go. Yeah. Right. And if they refuse, then we'll just put it wherever we can, as close as we can. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I can't imagine. Uh, there might be some dialogue on whether or not we want it closer or further. But, um, but yeah, I, 
I can see that we can yeah. kind of move it. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'd entertain a motion to accept the language that's proposed for the historic mar uh, marker for uh, for the hall and uh, to authorize a signature. Me, authorize I guess. Authorize Jordan to sign. Thanks. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Would you like to abstain from this or not? You don't have to abstain. Okay. Then yes. I'm fine with it. You don't want the financial state. That's right. Yeah. Quite the opposite. So thank you very much. I don't think you'll need our permission for ceremony because we don't own the hall. So yeah. yeah, it'll just be them. Yeah. But they'd love an invitation. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Thank you, Keegan. Yeah, Thanks a lot. Thank I you. Good at, in March, I go down to Capitol Hill and I'll be lobbying on Capitol Hill for ballot for preservation with Excellent. our senators. And, um, and then I head to their annual conference in Boston. So. Wow. Nice. Yeah. Impressive. Very okay. impressive. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for being involved. Okay. Thank you. Run the select board someday. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming. So we'll circle back uh, to the uh, East Montpelier. I think Montpelier. we can make this one quick. Yeah. Um, last we left at the East Montpelier Select Board was going to have their attorney draft the language that we agreed to. Yes. I, I, I came to realize that they didn't have their attorney do it. It was done by their town administrator. <laughs> and it kind of shows. So uh, I'll just share, I'll share my feedback and you see if there's anything you want to add because it clearly Wait, needs to I'm go. Sorry. Do, do another oh, review. wait, we had a document with Joe McLean's comments, though. No. Okay. And it said it was Joe McLean that was commenting. That, that was, <laughs> no. Was, um, that was prior. There was a couple of versions ago. Oh. No. This, anyway, there are two, two key issues here that we identified. One is the, um, what is something considered maintenance, a maintenance item that the fire department will pay for versus a capital expenditure that the towns need to, to contribute to. And remember the example that came up last year was a repair to the boiler. And so what we had said was that if it's, you know, above some threshold, 3,000 was the number that was put out there, then it would be considered capital. And we wanted to define that. So there is in section six a definition of a capital item of 3,000 or more. So that's good. It seems like a, there's more to that definition. It's also something that is in use for at least a year is the typical thing. So we're going to define it. But what it doesn't do is address what if it's an unplanned expense? That's that's sort of the, the key thing. If it's if it's less than three thousand dollars or less than the threshold, and even if it's a capital item, the agreement the, you know, the direction we were heading was that the fire department would pay for that. So, so it needs to have reference to an unplanned expense of less than whatever that threshold is. Does that make sense? So and, and it doesn't do that. It doesn't. It's, it's not clear enough on that point. I don't you think. mean, if it's regular maintenance, that's a planned expense. But if it's a a repair, that's an unplanned expense. Uh, so something well, if if it's a regular item that they that put into their operating budget, and we had a chance to approve that, you know, that's clearly going to be an operational item. If it's a item below this threshold, that's an emergency unplanned repair, the fire department will pay for it. But if it's a, something that's unplanned above that threshold, then the towns are going to have to pay for it. So there, part of this is not just the what's the definition of a capital item, but was it planned or unplanned? But gotcha. they have a repair budget, don't they? Right, but they don't. They didn't necessarily plan for the repair. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like the boiler, some, it just came up. Yeah. And then, then the question is, yeah. it, it, is it above the threshold or not? So I, I, I think that needs to be addressed in here. Yes, I agree. It's a, it's a fairly straightforward thing, but yeah. I, don't, I don't think it's proper as written. It was planned to be in the repair budget, like she said. Absolutely. Yeah, but it's an unplanned item. Yeah. That's, that, that's the crux of this. Okay. So the other uh, issue was giving the fire department discretion to use their contingency fund. They already have that, but bumping up the levels to current you know, modern standards, 
we pretty much agreed to the 40,000 per year on an annual basis. They can use up to 40,000 from their contingency fund. Um, and then anything greater, any one item greater than 20 would be, would need approval from the select boards. And I think the language that's in there gets the gist of that, but it's not, it's not how a lawyer would write it, I don't think. And then the other thing just to remember is that $3,000, I don't think that that we, we didn't shake hands on that or anything. That's not set in stone. That was just the number that people sort of Seem to agree to you, but it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't final. And the capital funds are are the ambulance replaces those. Is that right? Where does that money come from? The their capital fund. Yeah. So they're taking their receipts from insurance building. Yeah. And using that. But in the capital, that comes capital. from the ambulance stuff. Okay, that's right. That's how I remember. So it's a it's a somewhat convoluted. Funding mechanism, but mm -hmm. that's that's the model we've been using. Okay. So if those two points make sense, I, I can give them that feedback, and they're going to need to bring this back to us anyway. Salaries. Yes, those are two points make sense. Okay. Thank you, Kari. Sure. Uh, thanks, Kari. <laughs> Uh, so I think fixed all the EMDFs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. all right. uh, very good. Uh, so I think that uh, puts us into reports. Uh, and, uh, ordinance committee. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Committee. I'm sorry. Ordinance committee. <laughs> that was a Freudian slip. <laughs> <laughs> or something. <laughs> uh, sleep depri deprivation slip. Um, so, uh, this, uh, as everybody had a chance to uh, review the kind of the proposal that uh, Anne uh, had put together, um, I can provide the kind of context there. Um, uh, essentially, we uh, wanted to uh, form a, uh, a committee uh, that uh, will be kind of systematically working their way through uh, the ordinances. Um, and uh, rather than uh, kind of charging uh, any, any particular uh, committee uh, with looking at an ordinance or spinning up a, a committee for one ordinance, uh, this would be an ordinance committee that would be uh, made up of uh, uh, ideally two select board members um, and uh, some community members uh, to look at our ordinances and make recommendations to the select board, but also uh, with the, the charge of priorities from the select board. Um, uh, so that there's uh, kind of a, a prioritized list of things to, to work through um, uh, that, that kind of drives that, that dialogue and review. Um, and then those recommendations would come to the, to the select boards uh, uh, for, to the select board for approval. Um, and so uh, tonight we, I guess, need to have a conversation about whether or not we want to make any changes to the to the charge um, or the scope of that work. Uh, talk about the makeup of it a little bit and, and how many individuals uh, we want on uh, on that committee uh, and, and what the representation is going to look like. Um, and and then make sure that we're clear on what the what the first list of priorities are um, and how that, that how that's going to be rolled through. Does that feel like a fair summarization of of the ordinance committee? Um, so with that, does anybody have any uh, questions or feedback on on the charge? For this particular committee? Um, you're calling it the Ordinance Committee. I was calling it Ordinance and Policy Review because I thought they were yes. also going to look at policies. So just one. I, I thought well, we were just doing ordinances for this one. So I, can, can I ask you that the memo starts out saying there already is a Policy and Ordinance Review Committee. Is that correct? <laughs> well, um, do you have me answer though? You can. 
Uh, we started a policy and ordinance review committee, and then we realized, which I don't think any of us had a solid handle on, is policies are usually in house how we run the town office, how we pay bills, how we how we make sure the wheels keep running. And ordinances are town laws, um, and ordinances have a lot more you know meat behind them. They're we can call the sheriff on them. They have fines. They have all sorts of stuff, and they are they affect the entire public. So we realized that if we were going to be talking about ordinances, we would probably need to be publicly warning these meetings that at the moment are not publicly warned. We meet every once a month, every two weeks or so, and discuss policies without warning, without you know structured minutes. Um, but if we're going to be working on ordinances that do affect the entire population of the town, particularly the road ordinances that we've been discussing, we can't do that behind closed doors. It's going to have to be a charged committee, publicly warned with minutes and all the bells and whistles that go with it. Yeah, and, and, and to be fair and clear, uh, right now the only dialogues that have been had have been around uh, the internal policies uh, that have been, been brought to the select board and, and warned. Uh, but we have fairly deliberately, mostly out of the scope of work, uh, uh, been putting off any uh, ordinance dialogue, but we've also, there's often community requests for consideration of certain ordinances, and certainly there are ordinances that need that need to be reviewed um, and so that's that's why we're I guess calling it a, a, a referring to it as an ordinance and I, it probably would make sense for flexibility to leave it at ordinances and, and not wrap up the policies that would that would probably afford the, uh, the town the ability to review and the select board the ability to review policies uh, that are more internal facing um, it's just that the select board doesn't, and I, you know, which is how we get into this situation where we have all these outdated policies and ordinances. So I was envisioning a committee that would try to stay on top of all of it and be ready to act. Um, you know, if somebody from the staff came to us and said, we really need to update the purchasing policy. So were we planning to keep the policy committee that we have, or were we planning to dismantle that? Because I envision that sticking around as a somewhat regularly meeting policy uh, okay. committee. Okay, well the way I've written this is, order. this is the policy and ordinance committee, so Good. I guess we didn't have that no. clear understanding of what we were talking about. Um, I don't care which way we go, I just want to be sure we don't lose the ability to also keep track of the policies and guidelines and rules that are different from the ordinances, which is what happened to us in the past. So can, can you just keep this, the policy committee intact the, the way it's been for the last six or eight months? And then now create an ordinance committee that's yeah. community-based yeah. and just just let the two work separate from each other? Yeah, if you want. And you could actually, as the staff person, Tegan, you could call the meetings as needed. I think so. Yeah, I, I don't, I, where there are any um, interplay between the two, I don't think there's anything that would preclude the, the committee from raising yeah. uh, raising something to the select board's attention. I, I would just want to, uh, I wouldn't want to put the select board in a position where, uh, where it couldn't act, you know, quickly if it needed to on a, on a particular policy issue. I, I think policies, just by their nature, uh, there there could be uh, times when a policy needs to be taken up and considered. Uh, happens all the time. State yeah, law right. changes, sure. and so yeah. we have to revise our policies. Um, yeah. Where I think the ordinances are, are afforded a little bit more uh, more time, and also have a lot more uh, rigor around uh, around their changes. So um, as long as some, if, as long as you know, our town clerk is tracking it and making sure that it's. We're staying up to speed. Yeah. And has a mechanism for doing that. That's fine with me. We'll add it to the many roles and responsibilities mm -hmm. that are formally described uh, under the. Well, I think it might also be a good idea as a policy group to just take a peek at them and think yeah. okay, this one should probably be reviewed every year, this one maybe every three years. So if we mm -hmm. all decide together to set a specific schedule, then I'm happy to keep track of that and with Barbara make sure that it gets onto agendas as necessary for review. So are you comfortable making a modification then to the Ordinance Review Committee? Yep. Yeah. All right. Um, makeup. Um, I think it would be beneficial to have uh, a select board members on, well, no, 
members or a member. Um, should we start maybe just with the size? <laughs> and then we'll break it down from there. Um, this thing recommends five. Yeah, I think the numbers to consider are probably five to seven. Um, Yeah, you want to think about people who are, it, it's not going to be just specific to one topic. There's a, it's a great variety of topics, and what we really need is people who are good at legal minds kind of thing. Um, who can, um, you know, are able to read the state laws that, that govern what uh, controls the ordinances and make sure that we keep the laws. Um, from a record keeping perspective, I think what we had uh, discussed maybe having uh, the town clerk being a uh, standing member of the committee to make sure that there's some continuity between uh, record keeping and, uh, and, and other kind of ordinance related interplay with, uh, with documentation. Um, and, and Tegan so far has expressed uh, comfort with that <laughs> relative to her uh, workload and, and meeting commitments. Um, I, I think at least one select board uh, member uh, would would also need to be uh, would need to be on there, um, and I guess that would be an appointment. But we could say that it would be a standing select board member uh, or two. Um, mm -hmm. in the event that one person can't, uh, can't attend. Um, and then I think we should advertise to see what kind of interest there is out there in the community for people who'd like to be on. And once we see who applies, we can decide on the final number. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay, so, so I would ask that someone write a job description, and maybe that might be Anne. Um, but then also, yeah. uh, and in the job description, I would recommend that uh, town citizenship, the residency be required. Yeah. What would the frequency be? What frequency could you handle? Not too much. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, you know, we once don't, a month? I think once a month sounds reasonable, and if we felt the need to change it going on, we could, but I feel like once a month is probably good at least to get started. Uh, it's going to be a lot of dense work, and I feel like it'll probably be some amount of on-the-side work, doing research or drafting, so it's nice to give everyone who's going to be participating plenty of time to complete the tasks that are set for them before we meet again. Because these are publicly warned, they will have to be, I guess. Will there be public comment? How do you get not lost in the weeds on that? That's I'm assuming we would have to invite the public and invite public comment, but we would have to be fairly strict about limiting time. Yeah. Um, but that would be the idea. I mean, when yeah. you're talking about the Curtis Pond swim area, you want people to come in and talk about what they'd like to see in an ordinance sure. and have a dialogue about it. Certainly when you're doing roads, there will be people who will want to come in. And maybe as we take on an ordinance, it would be twice a month, so once for an open dialogue of, you know, we'll set aside this many hours for people to come and talk and share what they need. And then the next one, we would start digging in and still allow for public comment, but it wouldn't be a longer affair. It would be right. more limited as far as public involvement. It would be most efficient if we could go ahead and decide the standing time, day and time for yeah. this meeting, if it's gonna be once a month, you know, the, the third Thursday, of every month at 6.30 p.m. or whatever, just go ahead and set that at a time that's convenient for you regularly. The only Thursday I don't have anything. I know, <laughs> I, I, made, I, made up, I made up a day. But for somebody that's, that's convenient for you yeah. and convenient for whoever on this board. Well, that's it, it. it's not just me, it's, it's gonna be one or two of you as well. Uh, right, exactly, but you're all here together in the same room, so yeah. figure it out. Yeah, but usually, usually the boards meet and decide what works for everybody. So I think we'd have to wait till we get the other pu the public members as well. Well, but if you want to go ahead and get started, you could always change it, but maybe have a date and, and time so you're saying to get started. It's part of the advertisement. Yeah. <laughs> this board will be meeting. <laughs> I think that's well, gonna be hard to do. I think we're gonna have to solicit 
we're going to have yeah. to solicit some input on who's who's interested in uh, do well too. With their and, and so so people will apply in writing with a letter of interest, and the select board will interview all the applicants. All the applicants. <laughs> so <laughs> the crowd. <laughs> the board. That's the so we just run from writing to this opportunity. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 We interviews. I mean, we talk to them. Just the way we do for any commissioner committee. Yeah. And yep. maybe we could ask them as part of the conversation, what kind of availability do you have? If you say, oh, I travel a lot, I'm out of the country, mm -hmm. I don't like driving after dark, and I don't, you know, <laughs> you start to see limitations where, mm -hmm. and people are busy, a lot of people are very busy. Yeah. So just getting kind of the scope of availability might be a question to ask. So you're thinking once a month, is that what you said? I, mean, I, I, I it's, it's going to take a long time to get anything done, yeah, isn't it? I think maybe we could say once or twice a month as needed. Right. At first, it's probably going to be quite a bit because there's a lot to do. Yeah. But yeah. as things get more under control, we'll probably be able to slow down. And I think the idea was, it's what's recommended in this memo, is to appoint a group for a year. And then we'll revisit in a year and see how it's working and what changes need to be made, mm -hmm. if any. Yeah. That's uh, I think that's right. Not not exactly an ad hoc, but uh, but one that's worth revisiting. And then if it's uh, it seems like it's a perennial enough need, then we uh, then we can figure out terms beyond that. Uh, it seems a little ambitious to think that we might be able to get through all of the whole list in, in a year. Uh, but I think we're kind of done in a year. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that I think. Frankly, I mean, I think that there are certain, there's a certain number of ordinances that are probably going to be pretty easy. You'd probably be able to do the, uh, the swimming and a handful uh, that will, will not probably require as much conversation or cross dialogue, maybe, but, but... But given the conversations here tonight, we know that the road affiliated ones are going to have a lot of dialogue. Yeah, and, and, and I just putting it out there, like I think there's going to be a, uh, a lot of uh, cross pollination between other uh, between other policies and forms, and uh, mm -hmm. there's going to be a whole scope of stuff that comes with that. So mm -hmm. that one, in and of itself, could could take uh, the, the vast majority of the of the first year. Um, and I guess there'll be some question on whether or not the uh, the speed limits are are a part of that, uh, or if we roll that out, you know, mm -hmm. separate from uh, the others. But I mean, even just when you stop and consider all the front porch form about dogs at Curtis right. Pond, yes. just that one topic alone That's right. raised wow. a lot of conversation. Yeah. Great. Which I sort of is why I sort of like your idea of the two meetings, one that's more open forum and then one that's more limited public comment mm -hmm. that could be more mm -hmm. digging into the weeds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that'll be part of, like, I guess, the organizational charge to a certain right. extent. Um, yeah. They'll need, they'll need to form their own, uh, their own kind of operating procedure yeah. and adopt it. That's for sure. <clears throat> so is the group okay if I write a job description and say run it by my other, the uh, I was going to say my co-members, Jordan and, and uh, Tegan, and if they, if the three of us agree that it, it's all right. Oh, and Kari. Um, I did not right. join this committee. I would like to go on the record. You're, the, you're on the policy. Oh, yeah, the policy. Yeah, the policy. <laughs> <laughs> I will run it by you guys, yeah. and if it's if you guys think it's all right, we'll uh, post it. Okay. I think that's fair. Uh, do we need to uh, vote to form the committee, or can we not do that until we have uh, a committee defined? Hmm. Good question. Seems like you're forming a you're chartering a committee. Well, chartering right now it seems like they're going to do a recruitment. So I would wait and see how many members you decide right. to appoint. Yeah. And and in these conversations, I you you may decide that it's a two year term. Maybe you don't want turnover after a year if they haven't gotten very far and but they're still actively engaged. 
but they've already had a lot of discussion among themselves, it may make sense to make it be a longer than a one-year commitment. Right. Or staggered. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, at the beginning, yeah. you stagger anything. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I have written a committee charge in this memo. I mean, yeah. We can just use that. I'll, I'll reread it in light of this discussion and see if some changes should be made. Well, I think the charge can largely say, uh, yeah, with some, some slight changes, but what the, the phrasing is that it hasn't been formed and that we're, we're going to be, we're calling for interested parties, I guess, um, to help kind of define the, the size of the committee um, and that it, it, its forming is going to be imminent, unless there are any strong, strong objections to, to forming this committee, but I think there's a real need, and I think relative to the scope of the projects that, uh, that the select board uh, needs to consider on a regular basis, like, it could be pretty well served uh, to have a committee like this that is set and, and can be charged with looking at any, any ordinance, uh, not, just, not just the ones that seem to pique interest. From the time that it gets posted, um, how long do you want to give people to apply because People felt, some people felt like the DRB application period wasn't long enough. Back in March. How long was the application period? Well, we were posting it, and it was a matter of weeks, but you got lots of pushback that enough time wasn't given for people to apply. Hmm. Wasn't that big, oh, on big the slug, part of it? The slug board opening. Pardon me? The slug board opening is where we got the... Uh, yeah, it was, it was the, the select board opening. And that was what um, wasn't a month. It was less than a month. It was very short. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was a couple of weeks. Yeah. But but that's what I'm saying is that decide you know you, you might want to make it more than just a couple of weeks before the close of the window to apply for this new committee. You think you think there's going to be all these people? Who I don't know. I just <laughs> I, I, we, I heard a lot of pushback that there wasn't enough time for people to apply for the DRB back mm -hmm. when we were doing this before March town meeting. Okay. Uh, well, I guess we can we can do a two-step kind of uh, process. So if we're soliciting uh, some kind of recruitment feedback, uh, hopefully by the next meeting, we should have some initial feedback. That's going to be two weeks. And then we don't make appointments until the beginning of October um, so that we decide on the size. And then again, at after next meeting, we form the committee, um, and then that gives us another two-week period to continue to solicit um, uh, yeah. applications for um, uh, for you the open spots. On October seventh. Yeah. And potentially start the committee then. Or we could make a, we could make partial appointments. Uh, we could make partial appointments uh, for the standing positions, and then uh, we can charge those individuals with coming with a recommendation for the rest of them. <laughs> October seventh is in a meeting, right? It's the fourteenth. I was oh, just gonna sorry. say. I was just looking at the calendar. I think we moved it to the fourteenth. It is on the fourteenth. It's the second. Yeah, on the twenty-eighth. It's on the fourteenth. That's a What's holiday. What's on the fourteenth? It's okay. It's like it's indigenous people. Indigenous people, Columbus. Yep. Oh. Oh. Do we? Is anyone traveling? I can't yeah. even tell anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my phone that morning and just hope for the best. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't have particular conflicts other than no school. I'm fine. I will I'm, I'm I'm sorry, have right. back by the 14th. Jimmy, when, you're leaving in, in what you say, a week from Thursday? Yeah, so I'm leaving the 19th, so I'm going to miss the meeting on the 22nd, but I get home. 23rd. The 23rd? 23rd. Need glasses. Yeah. <laughs> She's in Moroccan town. <laughs> I get back the 9th, so okay. I'll be back by the 14th, but I would not be back if we moved it to the 7th. Mm. 
I can do the 14. Of the staff who has that day off. Yeah. We don't know. That's fine. I figured we'd be needing that day. Can we do it the 15th? Or, like, is that not the same? As we, we can. There's no reason not to. Uh, as long as it's warned. That may or may not be able to make that one. No. That's a good reason to. The 14th or the 15th? The 15th. Okay. I'm looking on the town calendar, but I'm looking it up to see if there's any problem. Could you be back on the 9th, Jamie? I'll be back the 9th. On the okay. Planning Commission, October 15th. Yeah. Hmm. So we're going to have to go over the board. Oh, so the planning commission has the town hall yeah. that night. Yeah. We could do it on the 7th, but if you really want to avoid the holiday, and then we just back. Yes, Jim. And then we want to do it at all. They're discussing the first meeting in October. Do what? For their regular good. meeting. But then you can make the 14th, is that right? Oh, yes. James, yeah. Yeah. It sounds like we know the yeah. second so, Monday yeah. is. I think uh, it, yeah. it's just that people have the day off. Oh. So, that's okay. Don't drink too much. There's a bunch of those people's notes. It's a good drinking day. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we'll stick with the 14th then. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, so we'll uh, plan on getting some more information from Anne to the policy group and then a and then circulate a call for interest um, with maybe a statement uh, about why they might be of interest in like serve, serving on a ordinance committee and what skills might be helpful because yeah, because we'll want to get that posted. I think it should be Ordinance Advisory Committee. Yeah. Yes. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. Yes, thank you. And we want the applications to be in a few days of, in advance of the 14th. Yeah, I guess we could say in the post that uh, on the, uh, at our next meeting, we'll be considering the size of, of the group and Potentially appointing standing committee members, uh, and then um, yeah, determining the the balance of the size, I guess, um, and making final appointments potentially on the fourteenth. So there's two deadlines for applications. Or well, I think that's kind of what we're. Uh, that's that's. No, the applications. The applications can keep coming until. I don't see why they couldn't just come in on the 14th. I mean, that's what we do with the other commissions. We just say, you know, if you don't submit a written application, just come in and talk to us. Yeah. Well, I, I, I would have, when we did the energy committee, I had people make a statement of interest in what their skills were and so forth. And all of that was on a spreadsheet that I provided to the select board and to Bill Hell. So I think people should submit a letter of interest and their skills and why they want to contribute. And it would be in your select board folder so the week before so that you can review and know who you're expecting to see on the 14th. That would be helpful. Okay. So submit written statement. I, I mean, that's just my suggestion. It's I say the night. So what day of the week is that? That's a Wednesday, so it's a Wednesday. Thursday we could compile. Yeah, okay. Uh, so policy folks, when do you want to meet to talk about Anne's language? All the other offices. Oh, I, I just thought I'd send it all to oh, you. Okay, yeah. comment. That works great. Perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that? A, uh, do we have enough on that? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Running out of steam. Here. Yeah, so much. <clears throat> uh, reports. <clears throat> uh, Curtis Pond, Jamie. Um, things I'll, are gone. Yeah, I'll take it over to Kari. Who <laughs> wants to go first? <laughs> oh, frankly, the fastest. <laughs> um, things are going well. We had a complicated couple of days um, discussing and negotiating with around the pay order that was in the board orders tonight. 
um, but I think we, we came to an understanding. Um, we had our status update meeting last Thursday, which is the engineers and Kari and I and dam safety and the contractors. Um, I'd say we're, everybody's feeling a little bit behind schedule. Um, the original permits have us out of the water by October 15th. Um, and that's seeming unlikely. Um, so we're discussing a process of doing a slate permit modification to extend that deadline to November 1st to just give us a little more um, buffer. And there's brief conversations around if, if we start pushing that boundary a little bit, um, postponing a few finishing touches, not related to the dam or its safety, um, to the following spring. So like the removal of the boulders downstream, if we couldn't get that done, that could be done. Great. There's just some conversation about schedule, um, but overall, you know, it's going to get done. The rebar has started going in this week. Um, we have Carol Concrete lined up to do the first pour of the footing uh, a week from today. So that's a pretty big milestone. It's going to be 17 concrete trucks or something. They're oh. combining the, the first two pours. Um, so, right, that's still the plan? Oh, they're doing right. the they're, Well, there's been a lot of discussion on whether the footing would be done in two pours, three pours, five pours. The plan has changed 12 times over the last few weeks. Mm. Um, but they settled on two pours. So they'll pour basically half of it. Okay. And then they'll pour the other half. The current plan is the fall, that Friday, so it'll be next week. One poor Monday, one poor Friday, the footing done. And then the next phase of concrete that's the sort of actual dam wall, um, they're subcontracting out, which we have known, um, to a concrete company that does forms. and Because it's a lot of complicated forming around the spillway. And, angles and everything. So that'll be a different crew coming in to form that. Um, starting the following week, he thinks that'll be about three weeks to get that ready and do the final pour. Um, everything's coming in. I, I mean, everything's going well. Everything's... I the lawyers have already used up half the contingency budget, more than half. Yeah, I mean, that That's was... annoying. Yeah, that, that was true early on. That was mostly around um, property easement permissions for construction you know, like, staging. Right, and like quick claim. All the quick claim deeds to, wow. yeah. But we so far, Larry's on budget. So. They, they yeah, we have the one change order, but we're, we're expecting to see some savings at, at the end. The, so. Right, the concrete, in the last delay when we redesigned the dam a little bit, it's got one angle in it, and we're able to draw that angle back oh. from, I think, 34 degrees to 27 and a half degrees or something, <laughs> um, which had a net impact of, of shortening. And we were also able to cut five feet off one end. Um, so he thinks we'll save 20, 25,000 um, in the concrete cost, um, which will cover the, about <laughs> cover the, extra in the previous phases. Um, he told me today he thinks that final budget will be under um, budget, ah. which may be an optimistic yeah. you know, <laughs> trying to sweet talk me into going over on certain things, yeah. but um, he's feeling optimistic That's that we'll amazing. come in under budget at the end of the project. You've had some lucky breaks yeah. along the way. It's, yeah. it's really going smoothly overall. He brought in an extra crew member for this week to do the rebar because it's very labor intensive and slow. If I could just ask one thing. Yeah. When, when concrete trucks always seem to be in a hurry and when we're having these 17 trucks come and go I, I would ask that they not go 25 through the village but maybe think about going 15 because even a truck at that speed that size going through the village is an awful lot to have yeah. happen. So this, I would like to have that happen, that's all right. 
Yeah, that's a good call. I'll pass that along. Yeah, it'll be a real thorn in the side, but maybe for the first day we have the sheriff's department down there. <laughs> 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 Knowing that it's also a school bus pickup, et cetera, et cetera, you know, just to kind of set the tenor for the day. Uh, um, I, don't, I don't know. I, I agree. I think that's a pretty valid point. If that's a pretty big, busy intersection and wanting to get going early. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a lot of traffic. In terms of cash flow, the first half of the two hundred thousand dollar loan the CPA took um, came in yesterday and hit the bank today. Um, so the second half, the other party is traveling, and I think we're going to connect soon, but it might be another week or two. But the CPA will be um, sending that check for a hundred thousand. To the town. Do we need a separate agenda we item and yeah, to accept we'll need it? To accept that, then. So I guess that'll be on the. It's we'll write the, the check before I leave, but we should add that to the agenda for the next meeting. Okay. Yep. But that's not. That's about half of the. Yeah, yeah, item. but we we don't need it, and we still have some balance. Okay, yeah. From our other stuff. Yeah. yeah. I just I wanted to get at least okay. one chunk in yeah. before I left in case it was necessary for cash. Well oh. organized. <laughs> okay. I'll get it. Well, thank you, Jamie. That's that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um. Any other questions about the dam? We'll move on to Tegan. Tegan. Um, I met with Ruben with RV Tech uh, a week ago, a little over a week ago, to talk things, and consensus seems to be that because we are just putting everything else on the cloud, because we have Microsoft, because Nimric is moving to the cloud, we're ready to just move to the cloud and not have a physical server, um, which will sort of change how we budget for tech items. Right now, we're putting a big chunk in our capital fund for tech every year because we know that every five years we have to buy this big server and now we won't have to be doing that but we will have more subscription costs more regular monthly and annual fees and subscriptions so he is working on sort of drawing up a rough estimate for me for what our monthly expenses are going to be and how how they'll change as we shift over to things um, he's not going to make those changes until we have Nimric moved over because I guess that's that's something he has to wait for um, and I'll have more about that when we do budgeting. I have not, Nimric tells me that they're gonna get back to me. I emailed them right after we approved switching to the cloud and said, let's get started. And I didn't hear back and I emailed them again. And I said, you all are the ones who need us to do this so that you can do the appraisal. And they said, you know, it's been a crazy time. Lots of people are on vacation. We'll get to you when we can. So they will get to us when they can. As long as it's not during ramp up for town meeting, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. I just, I, I would just, they're the ones who've been pushing all the towns for a long time to do this. And now that we've expressed interest, it's been very weirdly quiet mm -hmm. from them. So I, I don't know how to. Um, elections, the state is has already collected everybody's addresses and they're preparing ballots. They'll be mailed out the end of September. So people will start getting ballots early October. Um, if anyone is changing their address or you know of anyone who needs a different address, send them to me because we're going to have to have a conversation about how that'll work. Um, tomorrow, I am going to, not tomorrow, yes, tomorrow. What day is it? It's Monday. Wednesday, I'm going to the Clerks and Treasurers Association Conference in Montpelier. I'll be there Wednesday and Thursday. They do trainings and networking, and it's a, I hear it's a good time. I went to half of one day last year because it was all the way down in Fairley, but uh, because this one's in Montpelier and I don't need a hotel, I'm going to go to both days and learn a bunch of things, and that should be cool. Um, I don't know how much Jordan and I want to talk about the ordinance training we did, except that it was comprehensive and interesting, and there's always a lot more to learn. What was that? Illuminating. <laughs> Illuminating. <laughs> um, but we have some ideas for going forward, and if you all want more information on ordinances at some point, we could talk about that, but I feel like 9-10 is not the time to do a deep dive into the legalities of ordinance uh, construction. 
Barbara, is there anything else you can think of? Thank and then, you. Yes, I want to yeah. say one more thing about the Welcome Committee, which is a local program, which is I want to make sure you guys know that this is all volunteer for me. This is not on the, the clock yeah. uh, as volunteer for, with Friends of Callis. Um, and where Tegan is letting us say that it's part sponsored by not only Friends of Callis but the town office because she's allowing me to do color print jobs and she's giving us a presence on the website. Yep. So that's why it's Town of Callis and not because you guys are paying me to do this at all. It's all volunteer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. I enjoyed working on the, developing those brochures yeah. and then and then meeting with people has been awesome. That's wonderful. Unrelated to them. Yeah. We're going to get all kinds of intelligence about who's moving into town. <laughs> 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 What they're like, where they're moving from, and why. <laughs> what committees do they want to see? <laughs> uh, well, thank you, Barbara. Um, and Tegan, yeah, absolutely, we'll move on to the ordinance thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, Kari? Uh, so, three items. One, um, we had a uh, successful outcome on the dog uh, deductive order <laughs> amendment that's been signed. They've completed it. Hopefully, there's well, and apparently it's the most lovely dog ever. I read the letter. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? No conflict there. Um, second was about the uh, town administrator performance evaluation. So I talked about this with Jamie and Jordan a couple times. Just good practice, but also I was asking for the feedback in terms of thinking about next year's staffing model. So. Um, Couple things we're trying to do, and um, I proposed a process. So inputs would be your all forms that you fill out individually, and then come together. And I drafted a form, just basically took the job description and put it into a into a template. Um, and then that a time was not a job description. It was I, I assumed it was that you had sort of massaged it based on how the job was. No, I out. cut and pasted. The job description. <laughs> wow, he didn't have time for massaging. Oh. <laughs> no, you haven't changed it, right? So. No. Yeah. <laughs> I just only knew the policy. <laughs> yeah. Well, we can certainly tweak this process in the future. But anyway, that seemed like a good starting point. If you, yeah. you want to, if you want to change anything about that form, that's great. But um, and then the process would be move along fairly quickly, and um, hope to wrap up by um, what the fourteenth of October. <laughs> So you want us all to fill out that form? But yeah, so what, so what we would do is finalize the form this oh. week. We, we will email it to you, give you two weeks to fill it out. It'll get compiled. Then um, I, think, I think what I propose is that we could talk in executive session and that you could talk. And then someone will have to write it up yeah. and communicate back to me. Or, you know, so we're, like we're, what you're thinking is the full select board and you in have a conversation. executive session. Yeah. Okay. And then and then I can leave and you can. Yeah. Okay. Talk about you. Yeah, talk about you. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks, for, <laughs> thanks for taking the lead on your own time. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to get the gold star. We appreciate you. So, it's a so good good. does that generally work? <laughs> Like I a, think this is good. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it's a starting point, yeah. and, and we'll yeah. make it better next year. Okay, and then the third thing is uh, we didn't have time to deal with it tonight, but the Pelchucks did provide a proposal yes. to sell us a parcel of land. Yes. And so that's something we'll need to discuss, and I assume we would put it on the agenda for next time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Does yeah. anybody have any Many opportunities. That? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have some thoughts, but not questions. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I don't. That sounds good. All right. Um, and uh, as far as the uh, Shed B. Callis uh, uh, issue, uh, we are um, currently waiting for um, some input from the court. schedule a hearing um, and withdrew uh, the settlement uh, agreement that we were uh, trying to work towards. Um, so we are now waiting on the court. Um, so you're waiting for the court to schedule a hearing? Uh, I, uh, it's a 
Yeah, I hear it. Uh, essentially, with a strong recommendation for why there is a sense of urgency around getting it scheduled uh, soon um, and uh, to potentially make some decisions. Um, so that we're still waiting to hear whether or not they've they've kind of accepted that or will schedule the hearing. At the moment. Um, no need for any additional dialogue uh, on my part uh, or executive session unless anybody wants to discuss it further. Uh, but you're also welcome to give me a call uh, if you have any other, other questions. Uh, and with that, I guess I would entertain. Oh, no, Jamie had one more thing uh, that she I just wanted, wanted to, to quickly circle back to an old thing that I have an update on, um, which is the generator transfer switch that. You remember we, the town bought, intending to use here for this generator. Brookfield said it was not adequate for this generator. It's new in the box. I think it's in Nick Emlin's garage. <laughs> um, we, the select board, had at the time sort of said, if some store or community entity needed it, we'd pass it to them. The Maple Corner store is getting a generator installed in a couple of weeks, and it was also deemed inadequate for our use. Oh, goodness. So we're having to buy one. And basically, Brookfield said it's not compatible with the generators they sell. Uh -huh. And so I'll talk to Nick about it, but my general thought is, or our general thought is that nobody in town is probably going to use it, and the town should. You know, think about selling it on eBay or. What does it cost the town? I don't think it's much. I think it's like it's worth three or four hundred bucks. Yeah, three hundred bucks usually costs more than that. But it depends on the transfer yeah. switch, but it depends on the service size. Not but, a good yeah. one, apparently. Right. <laughs> no. um, so, anyway. Well, it, it, yeah, it might not just be scaled properly for yeah for that, but it might be it might make sense for like a residential application. Mm -hmm. So. You know, I guess if we had the specs, we could probably post it online right. and see if there's a community member who's installing a generator. Right, exactly. Uh, that would right. want a transfer switch. Or there's usually a lot more flexibility there. Right. A wider variety of generators. Right. Anyway. Okay. All right. Uh, motion to adjourn. So, so moved. moved. Second. All in favor? Okay. Aye. Any opposed? No, thank you very much.